Yo, what's going on, 60 Sam Lando Squad? First things first, this video is going to be very long, so I'm going to include timestamps about absolutely everything there is to know about Smite 2. We're going to start off with Conquest Map. We're going to go Strength and Intelligence. We're going to go Builds on every single God. We're going to go Abilities over every single God. We're going to go Passives over every single God. There are changes Your between Smite 1 and Smite 2 that. and absolutely everything. So uh, if you have absolutely any, any question about what smite 2 is or how to play it you're going to be able to load into a ranked game right after this video and uh actually not disappoint people it's going to be pretty sick so stick around if you enjoy the video make sure to like comment and subscribe and let's get right into it so i'm going to start off teaching you guys about the conquest map because the conquest map has so many different things than it does in smite one also the chat box is up in the top left corner if they have a question that I don't like inherently answer, then I will go over that. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is these buff camps. As you can see, these buff camps have little dots under them. Uh, that means that buff camps gain XP now. So when you kill a buff camp, uh, it's going to be a bit tanky because we are six minutes in and I didn't kill anything. Uh, but when you kill a buff camp, you can see that little tie or that little, uh, that little xp bar gains some xp right and when it this bar fully goes up it will gain a second notch and it will level this buff camp up to level two now what that does is it actually increases the uh hp shield that you gain when you pick up these these back camps now every single back camp all four of these right here that i just pinged uh, they all have their, their XP connected. So like I killed that one and this one leveled up and so did this one. And so did this one, you know, they haven't actually leveled up. They've just gained XP. If you kill all four back camps, then it should level them up to level two. And then, you know, so on and so forth. The speed buff has the same kind of, uh, XP system. Every buff in this game has the XP system. There's the speed buff, the purple buff, the red buff, the blue buff. I'll be making another video, by the way, telling exactly the stats and everything like that, that these buffs give you, but that's not really mandatory for this video. I just want to get you guys ready for the game. Um, so yeah, all these buffs actually level up and then you have the oracles just like they are in Smite 1. You kill these two things um, and then it gives you a ward over the gold fury pit. And then there's a new objective. There's a couple new objectives, but this is one of the new objectives in Smite 2. It's this little gold thing. Um, you press space bar on it, which spaces the interact button in Smite 2. You're going to need to press space bar to pick up a buff, uh, to interact with this thing. Um, even for a certain god's abilities, you need to press space to activate them. But yeah, so you go over to this, you press space, and after a short time, you get 30 gold. But not only do you get 30 gold, your whole team gets 30 gold, uh, each individual player. So it's actually a 150 gold buff to your whole team because it's 30 gold times five. Um, and then I want to talk about these things right here, the little treasure chests on the side. Those are very simply just XP camps. You had those in Smite 1. You have them in Duel. You have them in Joust. You have them in every single game mode. Uh, they're just... It's just basic XP. And then you also have this roaming buff called the Queen Naga buff. Now, what this does is it's a little bit tanky. I can't kill it by myself. But when you do kill this buff, it gives you these little two uh, Nagas. Like, they look like this, uh, but they're they're smaller. And they they tank objectives for you. And what you do is only one person can pick up the buff. And ideally, you give it to either the jungler or the support because they're the ones that are going to get in there most of the time. Uh, or the solo laner. You know, solo laner or support, not jungler. Um, but you give them to those guys. And what they'll do is they'll either hit the gold fury, the fire giant, a tower, a phoenix, or a titan. It spawns on all of those. And um, it will spawn two of these little queen nagas to tank and deal a very small amount of damage and help you just secure that objective without actually getting completely owned. And then one of the 
last actual changes to the map that I want to talk about is this thing called the Warhorn. Now, this is in solo lane. And um, why did I just hear a buff drop? Oh, it was the tower, which I, I'm going to talk about. But um, is the Warhorn. And again, you have to press space bar in this little area right here in the solo lane. And what this does, as you can, you can see when you press it, it has a, I believe, 30 second timer on it. Um, and this 30 second timer, maybe it's a 20 second timer. It's going a little fast. I'm not exactly sure on the, the amount of time, but, um, this timer is going to finish off. And then the next wave that spawns in every single lane. So all three lanes will have enhanced fire or enhanced minions that are basically as strong as fire minions. They have extra HP. They have extra damage and, um, they have extra damage reduction. So they're tankier. They do more damage and they have more HP. So it's really good. So you can see this, the Warhorn goes off, makes this big noise. And now you see on the map, how the, all my minions look like they're um, like circular. You can tell the buffed minions because they're triangular on the map. So these little triangular minions right here are the Warhorn. And you can see that they're the buffed minions because they have the little Warhorn icon and this little red glow to them. So they have this little little war whore icon next to them next to their name and you can see how much stronger they are here i'm not gonna help like i'm not gonna help them do extra damage but like you can see just how strong these minions are you know it's almost killed the whole wave and only the front line has died um these big minions right here are the brute minions and these brute minions are very strong they're way stronger than they were in smite one um, and they also give a ton of gold. So the next thing I want to talk about is actually last hitting because it's a huge difference in smite one and smite two on last hitting. Now you still get the same amount of experience points, whether you're, you're last hitting or you're not last hitting. So you're not going to fall behind on level if you're not last hitting. And this is definitely more of a skill-based thing to make sure that you're last hitting. But it is important because as you can see when... Well, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait it out and show you guys. But these melee minions, when this guy dies, I'm going to get 30 gold. But then when I last hit him, I'm going to get 45. So I get 50% more gold by last hitting. 50% is massive. From 30 to 45 is a huge increase. Um, so you really want to make sure that you're last hitting these guys because it is way more important than it ever was in Smite 1. Now, on top of that, as you can see, when minions get low HP, they have this little triangle that pops up around them. And that triangle means no matter how much damage you deal to them, either 1 or 1,000, it doesn't matter, it will execute that minion. So... When that little triangle comes up, you can just wait and hang out. And when a triangle pops up on a minion like that, boom, you hit it. It dies, you get the last hit. Executing minions and getting those last hits are so important for extra gold. And like I said, you still get the same XP, so I'll show you here. You get 75 XP for that and 30 gold, but then I last hit this one. I still get 75 XP, but I get 45 gold. So it's a big difference. And then I also want to talk about stealth bushes because stealth bushes, I feel like people are having trouble with this, at least as I've seen in my ranked games, there's a lot of people that are a little bit ridiculous. Um, so stealth bushes, obviously you walk in and you're stealth. It's in the name. It's understandable. However, if you auto attack, you can see this little icon pop up that says you are revealed for three seconds after auto attacking or using an ability or a potion, even a health pot or anything a relic, everything, right every action you do attack. except for backing, that's very important, you can back in a bush, okay? But every single action you do in this bush will reveal you for three seconds, letting you not be stealth for three seconds and then re-stealthing you again right afterwards. So if you're like, you're like waiting here trying to gank and you pop a health pot, you're going to be seen. Like if you pop the health pot, you're gonna be seen. Um. And as well as these bushes, they don't hide sound. So like, if you're sitting here backing, 
the enemy's gonna be able to hear you back. Like, I will hear someone backing and just attack the bush. Also, if you are hit in a bush, you are revealed to everyone, not just people in those bushes. You can ward a bush and get full vision of that bush, which is important. <clears throat> um, and then I also want to talk about the towers. There are these little notches, I guess is what I can call them. I don't want to die to that minion wave. It, it'll own me. Uh, there are these little notches, and every time you damage the tower, once it gets to these notches, a, two gold orbs are going to pop out. I, I showed you guys a bit earlier, but I'm going to damage this and show you guys here what this looks like. So when I'm damaging the tower, you can see the health bar just going down up top, and you get to the that little notch, it's going to drop these gold balls. Each little gold ball is worth 30. So each notch in that tower is worth 60 gold individually. Obviously that gold is split if you, you know, uh, under if you're with like a support or whatever. Um, but each notch gives you 60 gold. So 60, 60. And then the per or the, the blue one here, which I can't show you because all tier one towers have been taken because I got the Warhorn because those minions are OP. Um, and if you're a solo laner, make sure you prioritize Warhorn. But the last orb here, the third one, if it is the first time you're taking tower in the lane, only the first time, um, then the gold orb right here actually turns blue. And that blue orb is not worth 30 gold per ball, aka 60 gold. It is worth 80 gold per ball, aka 160 gold. It is a huge increase. So getting tower pressure over your enemies is actually a big deal because you get a, a huge bonus gold increase from just getting the tower first. Now, obviously, if you can't get the tower first, it's not that big of a deal. You only lose 100 additional gold. Um, and you can make that up just by last hitting better than your opponent, you know? So it's not that big of a deal. Uh, now, I want to talk about this wall because <laughs> it might not make sense, but this wall is kind of important. In order to open this wall, as you can see, it is minus 10% of your current HP. It takes 10% of your health to open this wall. It stays open for a minute. So you can see I just took, you know, 110 damage because I have 100 or I have 1100 health. This wall stays open. You can walk in and out of the fire giant pit. If you are in between this wall, when it closes, you die. It doesn't, it doesn't push you out. You will just die. So if this wall is open and you're not keeping a timer of it, just, just, just stay out of it, you know, cause it will kill you <laughs> and you'll look like a doofus. Show us. There you go. <laughs> now you, now you can see, now you can see it kills you. Um, and now there's a, a few more things that I want to go over for the conquest map. Um, and you turn back now. <clears throat> I won't have to wash your blood nice just on my blade. The first thing I'm gonna do is go to Gold Fury because Gold Fury is arguably better than Fire Giant, I would say, in Smite 2. Fire Giant is obviously like the most if I wanna actually go and completely own the enemy team in a fight, Fire Giant's obviously still better. But Gold Fury is better for objective pressure, and let me tell you why. Because there are now three, I guess technically four different forms of Gold Fury. So Gold Fury right here, as you can see, it's yellow on the map. <clears throat> and every time you kill this Gold Fury, you get a bonus. It's a permanent bonus that's added to your entire team. So the first time you kill the Gold Fury, you get a speed boost out of Fountain that is doubled in, in strength all the time, 24-7. If you're at the fountain and you run out of it, your speed boost will be permanently doubled for 15 seconds, however the duration of that buff is. Okay, and that that's that's what happens the first time you kill Gold Fury. The second time your team kills Gold Fury, all minions nearby a player um, will take reduced damage and deal more damage. Now you can imagine how insane that is when you have Warhorn on fire minions with tier two gold fury a minion can solo a player like they're so so strong 
if you combine all three of those aspects together. Um, <clears throat> and then the third time you killed a Gold Fury, which is like a very, very big buff, you had 25% bonus true damage to structures and 50 protections when you're near a structure. So if I'm like, let's say we're defending, let's say we're defending uh, my tower here and I'm like, oh man, I'm getting dove. I will have plus 50 of each protection. So like right now you can't see because of my face cam, but I have 36 physical protection and 35 magical protection. If I had the tier three gold fury, I would have 86 physical protection and 85 magical protection while I'm in the radius of my own tower or this tower or Phoenix or Titan. They all work. Um, and then on the flip side, if you're going towards the enemy tower, then you don't get those protections, obviously, but you get 25% of your, your auto attack damage added onto your autos as true damage for that objective. So it's, it's very, 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 very strong. It's actually so strong. Um, but right, arguably the strongest attack. type of gold fury in the game your is actually the tier four attack. gold fury. So after three gold furies of the game are killed, the fourth gold fury will spawn. And the fourth gold fury is called ancient fury. And ancient fury is basically bull demon from smite one. What it does is it disables all towers and phoenixes on the map for two full minutes, 120 seconds. So if when this icon turns purple on the map, this gold fury icon turns purple, then you know that that gold fury is not a gold fury. It's an ancient fury. Purple icon means ancient fury. Um, or you could just obviously count how many gold furies are killed. Every gold fury after the third gold fury, so four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, they're all going to be ancient furies. Um, and the, I mean, obviously, getting the buffs from gold fury are massively important, but getting all of your tower towers and phoenixes disabled for two minutes—that is game changing. That is omega important. Do not give up your gold furies and your ancient furies unless you're getting a massive amount of pressure on the map elsewhere. They are so important to your game and to progressing into a victory because I can't tell you like, because towers actually deal more damage in Smite 2 and they are tankier um, than, than they are in Smite 1. Like they do more damage and they're tankier, the towers are. That additional damage that you get from gold fury or even just turning them off from the ancient fury it's very very important your left tower is under attack it's very important um and i think i'm pretty sure that's all i want to talk about on the conquest map now uh i'm gonna talk about the starts on the map and to do this i have downloaded this map it is a map of smite 2. now here's there's a few different starts people can do if you are adc if you're the adc so by the way if you're in the dual lane if you're an adc you always go to the gold fury side of the map if you're confused about what lane to go to the adc goes to the gold fury side of the map with the purple buff spawns the solo laner goes to the fire giant side of the map with the blue buff spawns okay so we're just gonna go left to right if you're an adc player you're gonna start at this purple buff here, probably. I'm gonna start here. Uh, can I make my, my thing thicker? I'll make a marker. You're gonna start here, okay? If you're ADC. And then you're gonna go to lane and you're going to either completely own them because you're the best player known to man, or you're gonna stalemate, okay? Because no one loses. Everyone, you're, you're just gonna stalemate or you're gonna be the best. And then you're either going to go to the XP camp that is right here or the buff camp, which is right here. This buff camp spawns, uh, I think every four minutes, every three or four minutes, this buff camp spawns and it rotates to a different buff all over the map. And this one does as well right here in the mid lane. These two buff camps right here spawn and they rotate, you know, speed, purple, blue, red, and they'll just rotate through them. Um, 
But yeah, if you're ADC, you're just going to start at this purple buff and you're going to go to lane. That's like, it's the most simple thing you've ever done in your life. Don't think too hard about it. That's, that's the only thing you're going to do. Okay. If you're support, you're either going to start with your, with your ADC at purple, or you're going to invade. Okay. You're either going to, you're, you're going to either start here and go here with your ADC or you're going to completely slaughter the enemy and you're going to invade the purple and the speed with Sunder. But for the sake of just simplicity, you know, keep it simple. Don't do anything ridiculous. Um, you're just going to follow your ADC. Very simply. Support ADC, you stick together. Okay? Peanut butter and jelly style. You guys hang out. You love each other. For a while, at least. The mid lane. Uh, what's mid lane? Mid lane mid lane strikes me as green. So mid lane, most of the time, you're just gonna start in lane. Like you're literally just starting in your lane. You're clearing a wave. And then after you clear your wave, you're either fighting for that 30 gold buff right here, which is that is important because it's 150 gold for your whole team, right? 30 gold per person. So that's a really good thing to fight for. Or you're going to go to your red buff. Or you're going to fight for this buff. Either way, wave one, wave two, you're going to be sitting here in the middle of your lane. And you're going to be chilling. Okay? The solo lane, you'll be pink. You're going to start at your blue buff. And you're going to go to lane. Now, if you don't, if you're not playing a god that's good at doing buffs, you have to buy Sunder. If you don't buy Sunder and you're a god that's bad at buffs, first off, you've lost your lane. Don't do that. But just start in lane then at that point. But let's say, you know, you have Sunder. And I will show everyone builds and starts and stuff like that in the future. But let's just say you're going to start at your blue and you're going to go to lane if you're a solo laner. Okay? These are the starts that people are doing right now. And then if you're the, if you're the jungler... Jungler will be yellow. You're going to start at the speed buff or at the red buff. You have two options. Um, Technically, you have three options, but the third one sucks, so I'm not going to mention it. You either start at your speed buff or you start at your red buff. And you're going to go buff to back camp to back camp to back camp to back camp to buff to buff. Or, or... You will go from red buff to back camp, to back camp, to back camp, to back camp, to buff. It is very easy. It's very easy. It's like this, it's like this little W, you know? It's just a little W. That's that's your line. That's your line. If you want to get more aggro, you can go XP camp, XP camp, XP camp, invade and fight for this middle camp. And then after you fight for the middle camp, you can go red in this. But that's a little more advanced. If you're just fighting a very general jungle, you're just going to do the you're just going to do the W strat. You're just going to W. That's a very general start for every single god. It that now I'm not saying these are the best starts in the game cuz technically if you're support, the best start is to run through gold fear in the beginning, wait at this wall, and then sunder the speed buff. But that is more advanced. You don't have to do that to get an advantage in the game, right? But these are the starts that you're going to do for every um, every different role, right? Uh, thank you so much for the prime subs. I appreciate it. So now I want to talk about the strength versus intelligence. Okay, and the strength versus intelligence is, I mean, it's obviously a very big deal because it's the it's the biggest turnoff for people in Smite. From going from Smite to Smite two, strength and intelligence is the biggest change between the two games ever. So let's just do this. Every single god in the game has strength and intelligence scaling 
So if you want to be very simplistic about it, you can consider strength as physical and intelligence as magical. That's not exactly how they work, but if you want to just break it down to be super simple, you can do that. Now, how <clears throat> every single character in the game, their auto attacks scale off of... um, Yeah, there you go. They scale off of 100% of your strength and 20% of your intelligence because obviously you gain strength just by leveling up if you're a physical god. So there are still physical and magical gods in, in Smite 2. Neath is a physical god, right? Like every, every god in Smite 1 that transferred to Smite 2 has that same kind of scaling in terms of if it, is this a physical god? Is this a magical god? If they're physical in Smite 1, they're physical in Smite 2. They're magical in Smite 1, they're magical in Smite 2. It's the same thing. So Neath, even if you build her fully intelligence-based, is still a physical damage-dealing god. Um, so you can see here, my 1 did 296 damage, and my auto attack is doing 74. Uh, I would like to... Can I make you turn into god mode? Reduce cooldowns on, infinite mana on. Um, How do I make him... Oh level 20 apply settings to bot perfect so my auto attack does 49 and my one does 197 so let's say i buy let's go with a strength item right my one only scales oh uh, it scales 100 percent off strength but 50 percent off intelligence so my one is going to gain 100 percent damage from that strength that I just bought, which is it's 50 strength. Um, and my auto attack is gonna gain a hundred percent of that strength I just bought. So that she's up to 77. Um, if I were to sell this, let's say um okay, this is perfect. This is actually perfect. So my two is gonna do 127 damage. Okay, if I buy strength 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 right i still have zero intelligence my two is still gonna do 127 damage even though i have four items more more strength more strength i could have six items i could have my full build all strength no intelligence my two is still going to do 127 damage because my two scales specifically off of intelligence Okay, the healing I gain scales off intelligence. My damage scales off intelligence. As you can see there at the bottom, it says um, damage scaling 85% intelligence and heal scaling 10% intelligence. So even full build, even full build, my two does not actually scale and gain anything from my full build. And neither does my three because my three is only 70% intelligence. So... Um, it's, it's just something you have to check for each individual God. I'm going to go over it obviously, but right now, just think every single God has strength and intelligence in their abilities. Okay. And you can read right here on the side. So you can see every auto is going to be a hundred percent strength and 20% intelligence. So because I have a ton of strength. I can auto, I do a lot of damage, you know, that's just, that's just because I have strength. My auto attacks scale 100% off strength. Every character's does. Whether they are physical, whether they are magical, it doesn't matter. Every character's ability scales 100% off strength, 20% off intelligence. And then the abilities are where the, the influx matters, like the difference between the strength and intelligence. My one, for instance, scales 100% on my strength and only 50% off my intelligence. However, my two and my three both scale only off intelligence, which means building intelligence is actually better on, to do on Neath than going strength because my passive, which is my weave, like detonating the weave, this right here, that damage, that weave detonate damage scales off of intelligence 
my two scales off intelligence, my three scales off intelligence, my ultimate, I, you can't really see it like that. So I'll show you this way. Scales 100% off strength and 100% off intelligence. So you could do strength or intelligence build for your ult to hit really hard. Um, however, the best way to build Neath, well, I'll go over builds later, but just keep in mind that like, if you're looking at a God and you go, okay, passive is intelligence. The two and the three are both intelligence and the alt and is strength and intelligence equal. Maybe this is an intelligence based God, you know, maybe you should build this God intelligence based. Now, I'm not saying that's the only way to build her, but that's the main way to build her because all of her abilities scale off intelligence, whereas only some scale off of strength. Now, even though you're building her full intelligence, let me, let me go ahead and change this and go over to, let's just build like full intelligence. Okay. So my auto attacks are going to do significantly less damage. Okay. I went from 205 down to 94 because my, my auto attack scaling is only 20%. However, my two went from doing 127 damage to 294. And my three went from doing 90 damage to 266. So you can see like, so my alt also did like 450. Now it does 516 because it scales. It's, it's easier to get intelligence than it is to get strength. Just like it's easier to get magical power and smite. And uh, it's easier to get magical power and smite one than it is to get physical power and smite one. If you have something scaling 100% off of both, like this ultimate, you're going to do more damage actually going intelligence build. Obviously, you can go hybrid and make it even better, but that's beside the point. Um, and then the way that healing works. So in Smite 1, <clears throat> in Smite 1, healing was not scaling off of anything other than the rank of the ability. There was no additional scaling to healing abilities. You you couldn't build defense. You couldn't build power. You couldn't like, I don't know. You could you could build Rod of Sclepius or something, but that's, you know, again, that's beside the point. That doesn't really matter. There's no way to increase the healing you're doing in Smite 1. In Smite 2, every heal in the game scales off of intelligence. So you can see here, <clears throat> my 2 now heals me for 75. Uh, for each enemy hit and 110 for each enemy God I hit. So if I do this and I hit three of these, it should heal me for 225. Uh, and then uh, I have some life steal built as well. So you saw some additional numbers there, but healed me for 225. Why are there no healers yet in Spite 2? Well, the roster is really small right now and it'll, it'll get bigger obviously, but, but yeah, so healing scales off of intelligence in Spite 2. So if a god can go intelligence based and they have a heal specifically like Neath, which is why I'm using her for this showcase uh, to talk about the difference between strength and intelligence, you're normally going to go with this, this like, this, the higher scaling of the god's abilities, right? Intelligence, hundred percent, only intelligence, only intelligence. Your one does do less damage. It only does 331, or I'm pretty sure it did like over 400 before. Um, because your one scales way more off of strength than it does intelligence. But, you know, that's a small price to pay. Doing small damage on your one to make your passive, your two, your three, and your alt do more damage. It's a no-brainer, right? You're obviously going to do that. And when you load into a game with each individual God, and by the way, I will give you a build for every single God, and I will go over the abilities and the passives of every single God. But for right now, just know strength and intelligence. If you really want to make it simple, intelligence is for um, like magical damage, like ability damage, and strength is for auto attack damage. Now there are abilities that scale off of strength and don't scale off of intelligence. And I'll go over those um, when I go over the gods and their builds and what's best for them. But generally speaking, 
You're going to go... I don't know if you want to refer back to when you go through builds or whatnot, but playing a god that scales well with both is, and building hybrid is worth it. Um. Yes, I agree. I agree. I will go over that. But anyways, now that you know the difference between strength and intelligence and what they do and how they're separate and how everything scales on an ability per ability basis. It's not like, it's not like Neath is only strength or, or, you know, Hakate is only intelligence or Anubis is only intelligence and on her is only strength. It's not like that. Every ability in the game scales separately off of strength or intelligence or both. So that's what you need to know. Turn off the monitor capture for a second. And now I'm going to start going over the individual gods. <clears throat> and I mean, I guess I can just start with Neath, right? We're already on Neath. I might as well. So the passive is Broken Weave. It's going to be the same thing. Whenever you use an ability that creates a weave or you get a kill that creates a weave, um, you'll be able to detonate those. So your two will create a weave or a kill will create a weave, like I said before. And your passive is that you will be able to detonate these weaves by pressing your one button. Actually, let me change my settings. Uh, oh, that's not what I wanted. Um, what do I? Here we go. Make it quick cast. So you can see when I shoot over the one, it will detonate it. You can see the, the little circle pop up when I hover over it. Uh, and that detonate is your passive. And that passive scales off intelligence and does damage in that area around it. And your three, which is your backflip, will also detonate these weaves and blow them up. Which is going to be a lot of burst, which I'll show you also how to burst with each individual god. But just, you know, your passive, if you see a weave on the ground, you see something like this, you can shoot it, it blows up, or you can backflip it, and it blows up. And it does damage, scaling off intelligence in a little circle around it, also giving you attack speed. Um, <clears throat> and intelligence. As you can see right here. Your one, it's super simple. It detonates weaves, obviously. And it roots enemies and does damage to enemies. So you can see he's rooted there. He gets this little icon above him that says root. Um, oh, excuse me. And it does go through as many enemies as possible. So it'll go through all three of these minions here. Um, <clears throat> and I mean, that that's basically all it does. It scales 100% off strength and 50% off intelligence. So you can build for, for the specific uh, damage of the one for Neath, you can build either strength or intelligence. The two is going, the two is kind of a lot, to be honest, so get ready for it. The two is going to leave a weave on the ground, plus it's going to leave an additional weave for any enemy that it hits. Obviously, <laughs> it can be a little bit insane. Um... It only leaves weaves on enemy gods hit, by the way. So, like, if I do this, it will only leave the the normal singular weave. Whereas I, over here, have two because I hit an enemy god with it. Um, Each enemy god that you hit with it, you will heal 100, or you'll heal based off your intelligence. And the damage of this ability scales strictly off intelligence as well. So... Intelligence is the only way to get your two to really be like pumping numbies, healing you a lot, stuff like that. Um, there is a base heal, as you can see right there at the bottom, up to 35 when it's max rank, starting from 15. And uh, there's an increased heal based on if you're hitting an enemy god with it or not. Or however enemy, however many enemy gods you're hitting. The three is just a backflip. It's very simple. You just, you backflip. You can backflip over walls in Smite 2. You could not do that in Smite 1. So, like, in Smite 1, you couldn't backflip over this, but in Smite 2, you can. Um, so, just keep that in mind if you're playing Neath. You can backflip over wall. Okay, I fucked it up. You can backflip over walls. 
and you can get to safety a lot easier than you could in Smite 1. So that's important. And as well as uh, the backflip doing damage, as you can see here, it does do some damage. Um, it also slows the enemy, I believe. It doesn't slow the enemy. I'm a big liar. I thought it did, but I guess I suck. Um, so retract that. It doesn't slow the enemy, but it will detonate all weaves. So as you can see right here, there's no weaves on the ground. Um, in Smite 1, it slows. Okay. So in Smite 2, it does not slow. Interesting. Although it does show the animation that they're slowed. It just doesn't say it. Which is weird. Are we sure that it doesn't slow? How fast are you? Okay, you're not very fast. It doesn't slow. It looks like it slows, but it doesn't slow. All right, interesting. But the backflip will detonate any weaves in the area. So like, let's place two weaves down, one from hitting him, one from just normal. I can backflip right here and detonate a singular weave. And even though my backflip didn't hit the enemy god, refresh. Even though my backflip is not damaging the enemy god, as you can see, I am detonating the weave and the weave will damage the enemy god. So, um, the backflip is actually a ton of burst damage. If you have a lot of weaves on somebody, you can backflip and it does a lot of damage, as you can see. It just did 1,200. Um, like, the, the burst damage you can do by 2-3-ing is really significant, or 2-1-ing for that matter. 2-1-ing is a lot harder because it's more specific. Your 1 is a very narrow range, and you have to line up. If you want to, like, 2-1 burst, you have to line up the weave plus the the enemy god in order to get the burst damage. Whereas the 2-3 is like, it's just such a general area because your 3 is so large that it's really easy to hit both the weave and the enemy god in the same time. So I would actually recommend if you're going to play Neath that 2-3 is the most like safe combo that you can do for burst if you're building her intelligence obviously. Uh, and then the alt is very, very, very simple. You go down, this little thing charges up in the center, and uh, you target any enemy god <clears throat> in the game that you can see on the map. You can shoot anyone, anywhere on the map. It is a completely global ultimate. Uh, obviously, you can't shoot your teammates. You can shoot any enemy god anywhere on the map, as long as you have vision of them. And it shoots them does damage and stuns them it's uh it's very very simple and that is all of Neath's passives and abilities uh now i'm going to show you how to actually build Neath. and there's a few ways that you can build Neath. uh so obviously first and foremost Neath is an adc and that adc is crit chance like you can crit as an adc so you can build her one way with Crit chance. Now, the very obvious, like, crit chance build. I'm not going to buy a starter item, because if you buy one starter item, you can't buy any others. So I'm just not going to buy any starter items. But you can. You can, obviously, start with starter items. If you're going to build Neath uh, Strength build, you're going to start her with Bluestone, Leather Cowl, or, or Death's Toll, one of those. If you're going to build her Intelligence build, you're going to start with Bluestone, Conduit Gem, or Sands of Time. Probably Bluestone, though. Bluestone is, is pretty good. If you build her crit, I'm reporting you. Don't listen to him. <laughs> um, now, I think, I do, I will say, I think building her strength-based is the worst way to build her. But this is the build that you're going to do if you're going to go strength. You're going to go Devil Gloves, and then you're either going to go Xe or... Where's Xe? Executioner. And you can see the the... The items still look the same. So, like, Executioner looks like the Glyph from Smite 1. Devos looks like Devos from Smite 1. Hasten looks like Hasten from Smite 1. Titan's Bane looks like Titan's Bane from Smite 1. You know, that there's a lot of crossover. Um, but, yeah, you're going to build her Devos, Xe, and then you're going to build her with a couple of crit chance items. Um, you, you can go two crit chance items or three crit chance items. It's completely up to you. Then you're going to go Hasten. And this is pretty much just the strength build. 
It's some crit chance. It's some penetration. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage. It's uh, your abilities do almost no damage. Uh, and it is definitely the worst way to build her. But if you really want to play crit neath, this is probably the build you're going to go. If you want to play intelligence neath, which is definitely the best way to go. And by the way, I know that you can double stack right now, but they are going to nerf double stack and give it diminishing returns. So for the, the video, I'm going to be avoiding any kind of, um, excuse me. I'm going to av be avoiding any kind of double stacking for this video specifically. Uh, and I'll just be going like a normal mage build. So if you're going to go intelligence neath, which is definitely the way you want to play her, you're going to go book of Thoth. And then you're going to go probably gem of focus and or last grab. You're going to go rod up to hootie. Um, you're going to go soul reaver. And then if you want pen, you go ob shard. If you don't want pen, you can go polynomicon for extra burst. You can go, uh, you know, Jade scepter to be a little bit safe. Cause Jade scepter can throw, throw enemies backwards. Um, but just to keep it very simple, you're going to do this build here which is going to be like the biggest damage build you can do. You can see my alt hits for a lot of damage. Hits for 918 if you include the tick damage. Um, my 2-3 combo burst deals 1,500 damage almost. My 2-1 burst does 1,600 damage, 1,630. So yeah, Intelligence Neath is definitely the way to play her. She's very, very strong intelligence-based. And... uh this is what most people are playing her as. So those are pretty much the two builds. You can also build her strength without crit. Uh, this build sucks, so I would never build it like that. But, uh, you know, it's worth showing. Um, you're going to go Devos. You're going to go Xe. There's Kins somewhere. I don't know where Kins is. There's Kins. Dagger Frenzy, which is super important. I'm going to put that over there. Um... And then you're going to go like, I don't know. You're probably going to go double life steal to be honest, if you're going this build. I don't even know Titan's Wade. So this is like the Kins build. This is like, it sucks. Like it's, it's much faster to just kill them with intelligence, but <clears throat> this is just going to be like another build it can do. Double stacking devs and trans should still be good. Well, I'm going to avoid double stacking in this video regardless. Just because I don't want to like... If they're new to the game, double stacking will set them too far behind anyways. <clears throat> I've got a question about intelligence and strength. Does everyone stack off intelligence and strength? Or is it certain gods only get benefits from strength or intelligence? So every single god... <clears throat> excuse me. Every single god... There are basic attack scale 100% off strength and 20% off intelligence. And then it is a ability to ability basis on what stacks off of intelligence and what stacks off of strength. For instance, for Neath, her, her one skills 100% off strength, 50% off intelligence. Her two skills 85% off intelligence. Her three skills 70% off intelligence. Her alt skills 100% off strength and 100% off intelligence. So it's a, it's a per ability basis. It's never a, like, this god only scales off this, or this god only scales off this, you know? <clears throat> Pretty much every god is going to get a benefit from both strength and intelligence for the most part. <clears throat> um, Alright. Let's go into... The next god. <clears throat> wow, the defeat screen really takes a long time, huh? An ally has left the game. We're gonna go to on her now. All right. Um, how do I level? I gotta level up. So level to twenty. Damage immunity, reduce cooldown, infinite mana. Level the bot to level 20 so I don't instantly kill them. 
All right. <clears throat> Man, my throat is killing me. I've been yapping for 40 or 50 minutes. <clears throat> All right, so on her, on her, obviously his auto attacks are going to scale the same way all the other gods do. His passive, it's the same passive as Smite 1, which is basically uh, for the first three auto attacks, they're going to do more and more damage. So you can see the first auto attack is 52, the second will be 55, the third will be 59, and then every subsequent auto after the, the 59 will be staying at that 59. Um, because it puts a debuff on them that reduces their protection by 10. And it will keep... It will keep uh, that stack on them four seconds. And every time you auto, it will refresh that four second debuff. Uh, missing string table entry. Interesting that they have that added. Uh, anyways. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so the one has the same kind of effect as as Smite 1 does. You drop it down, stands. and it increases their damage taken by 20%. So you can see from 59, I went up to 70. And then I go back down to 59 when it goes away. But I'm at 70 now. I can put my one away. It goes to... Stands. Oh, I can't. I can't put my one away. There we go. 59. Um, you can't actually put down multiple ones. The only reason I'm able to is because I have infinite cooldown on. Trust me, you cannot do this in game. It would be absurd. This would be crazy. Holy crap. Okay, sorry, I'm trolling. I'm trolling. Sorry. Anyways, uh, the, what the one is going to do is it's going to slow by 15%. Uh, I don't understand the additional slow on this. Um, I believe the slow is 15% no matter what. The slow stacks with an additional slow when close to the pillar. Okay. So I guess it's that little, that little area inside the pillar that doesn't really have those particle effects in it. That's going to be a 30% slow. And then the general area around that, like the orange-ish area is going to be only a 15% slow. So that's interesting to note. Beware the shifting sands. That is interesting to note for sure, for sure. Beware the shifting sands. Um And then yeah, the, that's that's basically all it does. It doesn't scale off any strength, doesn't scale off any intelligence. It's just going to slow them and increase their damage taken by 20%. The 2 is going to scale only off of strength. Which, as you can see, you know, his auto attack scales 100% off strength. His two scales only off strength. His three scales only off strength. And his alt scales only off strength. So you're never going to build intelligence on, on her because literally nothing he has scales off intelligence. He's only a strength character. But anyways, uh, his two is going to hit. It goes through enemy minions, as you can see. However, it stops on the first enemy god hit, and instead of actually uh, going through, it will just throw the god. Now, something interesting about this is you can throw the god into uh, a minion, and it will do damage to that minion. So, like, hold on, I, I gotta, I gotta get on her, or I gotta get Ymir back over there. There we go. So I can throw Ymir through the minion to kill the minion. Now, if you, you can also throw somebody through another person to stun them. So like, uh, can I spawn another god? Actually, I can. So I can, I can throw this Ymir into that Ymir to damage both people. So like, even though I'm only hitting this Ymir with my two... If I can throw him through another person, it damages both people. As you can see. So they're both taking the exact same amount of damage. I got to get them back in the center real quick. Hold on.
Um, and um, that's that's pretty much all it does. Now, what you can also do with the two is when you throw someone, you can actually, if you hit them into any solid object, uh, like your pillar or the wall, um, it gets they get stunned. Now, you can't stun multiple people. You can only ever stun a single person. But if you two them into a wall, they will get stunned. So, ideally... Ideally, what you want to do is you want to, like, pillar and then throw your two and it will stun them into the pillar. Like, if there's no wall around, you want to try to use your pillar to stun someone. Obviously, it's a little bit hard to do in actual practice when people move and juke you. But, uh, generally speaking... Try to aim you, try, try to put you and the enemy between a wall, you know? If you, you want to look at a wall and have an enemy in between you, pretty much at every point you're playing on her. Because getting that stun can change the course of a fight dramatically. Like, it actually can just win you the fight outright. So it's pretty insane. Um, The three is going to be a leap into the air. It's going to do some damage, and then it's going to knock back absolutely anything that's in the radius. So when I jump, uh, I'll just do it on one Ymir bot for now. I'll jump here, and I'll land, and the Ymir will get thrown backwards from me. So I'll jump again. I'll get thrown away. I'll jump again. I'll get thrown away. It happens every single time. As long as this little circle radius is near them, they will get knocked back. Um, and you can do it with as many people as possible. So, like, it happens... Uh, let, let's move this guy over here. So you can see there's two people here. If I jump in between them, they'll go flying. If you land on 17 people, all 17 people will go flying. That's just what the ability does. Now, it's a leap... It is your getaway. Um, using it to engage is risky. And you better hope that you're ready to win the fight if you do that. But for the most part, it's it's that's all it does. It just you leap in, you knock back, and you fight. Or you leap away, you slow them and you run. And you pray to God that they don't kill you. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. Um yeah, I'll show I'll show combos after I'm done explaining the abilities. Uh the alt is different than Smite 1. So in Smite 1, you threw eight spears, and every spear did the same amount of damage. Excuse me. Um in Smite 2, however, the alt is different. Wrong button. You throw four spears. And then a gigantic fifth spear. And the uh, spears you throw, they go through everything. Uh, as you can see, I can hit both of these enemy gods with them. And the first four spears, they do 193 damage, or they, do, they basically scale 40% off your strength. When the last spear gets thrown, it scales 80% off your strength. So that last spear is going to do almost twice as much damage as the first initial four. So that, that, that last spear is going to be massively important. Um, also worth noting, his two does not go through walls, as you can see, but his alt does. So, um, if someone's trying to like kite you around a wall or something, you can just use your alt to kill them. And... You are CC immune during the ent entire cast of your ult, so you can't be like pulled by Ares or anything like that. So there's a couple of combos you can do with uh, on her. These are the combos. So some combo, you're just gonna like jump on someone. You'll auto, you'll stun them into the wall. You're auto, and you'll like pillar for the extra damage. That's like a very generic combo, right? Um. Uh, I I can't get that guy. Uh, a more advanced combo you can do is you can jump and then pillar stun so that they're in the center of your pillar getting the 30% slow 
and completely in control. Like you're you're completely in control of that fight. So those are like pretty those are pretty much the two like generic combos you're gonna be doing with him. You're either gonna just three two into a wall, or you're gonna three and then pillar two. Um, and then obviously you're going to ult whenever you feel like it. your ulting is, is very simply just when you feel like you can get a kill, you're doing that. The build for on her is pretty much going to be the same as the crit neath build because on her is definitely best off with crit. You're going to go devos. You're going to go XE for the pen. Um, you might even go Titans Bane. You're probably going to go hasten because that item is busted. Then you're going to go a bunch of crit chance. Um, if you throw your one down, you can see I'm doing a ton of damage, doing 420 damage per crit. Um, and then on top of that, because, because Ymir, or I'm sorry, not Ymir, because, uh, on her, all of his abilities scale strictly off of strength. Going this crit build is not only going to help your auto attacks actually like chunk, but it's also going to help your abilities do more damage too. So, you know, my jump is doing 240. My two is doing 330. My alt is doing a thousand. Apparently that's insane. Um, and you're still going to be critting for about 478. So that's pretty much the only on her build you're going to go. You could also do the non crit version, which is the uh, Kin's version with double lifesteal, which Reaper, I, I'm, in my opinion, is the best lifesteal item in the game. Um, so you're going to go this Kin's build with double lifesteal. You're going to be doing a lot less damage, but as you can see, I'm healing for 95 HP per auto, which is absolutely insane. Um, and then Kin's is only doing 56 because the Ymir doesn't actually have items on, but if, you know, you are actually fighting a, a genuine, like, full build tank right now. Kins would probably be doing somewhere around 100, maybe a little more. But yeah, this is a, the other build you can go. And that's uh, that's pretty much all of Honor. That, there's not much more to him. Let's go on to the next god. Does anyone have any question that I'm like, I'm skipping over in chat? Anyone have a question? Or am I doing a pretty good job explaining everything? Have I talked about relics? No, I'm going to talk about relics last. You didn't mention teleporters during the conquest map. Did I not? Damn. I'll go back and do that then. I got to do that. All right. Uh, so level 20, infinite mana, I'll do all this stuff. Oops, I was clicking the apply settings to bot instead of leveling with the 20. All right. Now, Anubis is one of those gods that I'm nervous to talk about because his two scales off of... Wait, they changed it. Oh, thank God they changed it. Okay, so in one of the beta tests, uh, Anubis rap scaled off of strength. <laughs> And, and people were building Strength Anubis with, like, crit chance. Crit chance and strength on the wrap. Thank God they changed that. Because if they didn't, I was going to be like, do not build Anubis Strength even if... Even if it does scale off Strength. But, okay. Everything in Anubis' kit scales off Intelligence. That's That makes me very happy. His auto attacks, as always... 100% strength, 20% intelligence, even though he is a magical damage character, okay? He is magical damage. Uh, his passive is this little, you can see it right here. He's, it's got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like up to eight notches. And every 10% health you're missing, you gain an additional 3% lifesteal, 3% um, physical protection and 3% magical protection. So at maximum stacks, which is 20% health when you get completely owned, um, you'll gain 
an additional, what is that? 24, 24% lifesteal, 24% protections of both physical and magical. So let me get, let me get cooked for a bit. I made myself damage immune. Let me get cooked a little bit. You can see my passive start to stack up here. I have three, I have four, I have five, I have six, I have eight. I'm dead. I lived. Okay. So my passive is fully glowing, which means I now have an additional 24% life steal, 24% physical protection, and 24% magical protection. Um, even though I have no items, you can see that I'm life stealing right now. That is because of the fact that my passive is giving me that life steal. And the healthier that I get, the less life steal I'm going to be getting. So it started at 12, and it's down to 9. You know, started at 12, down to 9. Um, now it's down to 7. And it's just going to be going down. And down. And now it's at 6, you know, so on and so forth. So the healthier you are, the less bonus you get from your passive. Um, but, you know, it's a pretty good passive all in all because Anubis is meant to outplay gods and outplays happen when you're low HP and they start owning you. And then you start owning them because you got your 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 buffed up protections and lifesteal bonus. <clears throat> the one is going to do 12 ticks of damage. It's going to scale 18 to 22% of your intelligence. The scaling actually goes up per rank of the ability. So at rank one of this ability, it's going to scale 18%. At rank five, it's going to scale 22% per tick of your ability, by the way. Um, so it's going to do 12 ticks of damage. And with no items, it's going to do 323 damage because I have 22% scaling and I have a little bit of my passive. But yeah. So it, it literally doesn't do anything else. It just does 12 ticks of damage. And it scales off intelligence. I, it does make you immune to being knocked up, though. So, like, let's say the on her that I just showed you, if he was going to use his two or try to jump on you and knock you up and or displace you or knock you into a wall, if you use your one, you cannot be knocked up and you cannot be knocked back. So it would counter that on her who's trying to jump on you. So keep that in mind. It's important. The two, very, very simple. Does a little bit of damage. Okay, I love you. Be careful. Um, the two, very, very simple. It's a, it's a stun. The stun gets longer in duration, starting at a 0.85, all the way up to a 1.25 second duration. Um, does just a small amount of damage, scales off intelligence. It's really nothing other than a stun. You're never going to be like, oh man, I just killed that guy with my stun. You know, like that'd be insane. For the most part, your two is just going to be a stun. Um, and it's going to be, like I said, a 0.85 second stun all the way up to a 1.25 second stun, depending on what level the ability is. The three, <coughs> excuse me, the three is going to do damage and it's going to do a 25% slow in the area. It's going to do four ticks of damage. As you can see this little area right here gonna do four ticks of damage and during the course of the three you can see the little effect on the the mirror he is slowed by 25 percent during the uh duration of it it's gonna scale 35 percent off your intelligence which obviously 35 percent of your intelligence but it takes four times it's a lot of damage man the one is a lot of damage too it's just 22 percent and it takes 12 times um and then the alt is gonna be uh, it's going to be different from in Smite 1. So in Smite 1, you would alt and it would do the same amount of damage every single tick. And it would tick for 30 times if you hit the maximum duration alt. In Smite 2, the alt has a very initial burst damage, which is going to have 260 base power and then 100% of your intelligence scaling. <coughs> Excuse me. And then it's going to tick 24 times after that over the course of two and a half seconds. Um, and each tick is going to do 43 base damage plus 18% scaling. Obviously, the base damage is going to go up based on what level you have the ability. But let me show you now. 
So you're going to get this big charge up. You're going to get this big charge up, and then it's going to do this big initial burst. And then it's going to do the tick damage afterwards from that initial burst. So as you can see here, if I just hit my initial burst, it's about 190 damage. Um, which it's pretty big. It's a big deal. So with Anubis, I'm going to go like a very... Uh, Hawken, do you want to give me... You want to give me an Anubis build? Oh, you have given me an Anubis build. All right. So for Anubis, you're pretty much just going to do this. And this is my... Uh, I mean, I, I think we're going to team up, right? He's my mid laner. So I trust him with this build. Um, He said I can switch out Rod for Soul Reaver. But I'm probably not going to, to be honest with you. Um... Life Seal, Typhons, and then Totem. Okay, so this build, uh, obviously Anubis has a ton of Life Steal in his kit. His entire passive is based off of increasing your percentage Life Steal and your protections. So you want to build a ton of Life Steal on him. With Typhon's Fang being 40% Life Steal and uh, Bloodbound Book being 10% Life Steal. <clears throat> Not to mention, it's a shield when you activate it. It gives you your... It gives you 10% uh, of your max HP plus 80% of your intelligence as a shield. So it's a little bit of an extra uh, help. <clears throat> don't forget to stack the book. I don't need to stack the book. It's fine. I'm not looking for specific numbers. I'm just showing off a build that you can do that makes the god a little bit better. Um, but yeah, so you can see the 3-1 combo does 1780. Just my three by itself will do 651. Just my one by itself at full build will do almost 1,200 damage. And then this is the big part here. Well, the, the stun's going to do 240, but... The big part here is the alt. Now that you actually have intelligence built, you're going to see just how chunky this initial burst of the alt is. Boom. Like, it's 600 damage, basically just the initial burst of the alt like in smite one it would take at least half a second maybe like 0.75 seconds to get up to that amount of damage because you would need like 10 10 ticks of your alt to do that that initial burst but this charge up burst damage that anubis does is so much is so much now obviously anubis alt if you full charge the whole thing it's gonna one hit him you know it, it's just that's just what anubis does but generally speaking, with Anubis, you're, you have two combos. You have your alt combo and you have your normal combo. Your normal combo is going to be either three and then you wrap and use your one. So that's going to be your normal combo. It's your, it's three, two, one. Or if you're less confident in landing your two, you can two, three, one. Because your three does slow them down. Uh, so you can wrap first if you're a little less confident in hitting your two. But, uh, yeah. So two, two, three, one. Or three, two, one. Either way, they're both good. And then your alt combo is very simply the same thing. It's going to be two, three, two, three, four. I mean, it's just the buttons in order. Two, three, four. That's going to be your alt combo. Your... You're a very, very generic one. Now, you don't need to combo your ult with things. As as you know, Anubis ult does a million damage. So, technically, you could just ult. <laughs> I mean, most of the time, just ulting is going to work. But, uh, but yeah. 2-3 ult is going to be your oops, your dead ability buttons, you know? And yeah, I, I'm not... I don't really need to go over another build with Anubis because generally speaking, like if you're not going to go lifesteal, I guess you could sell the lifesteal if you're going for like a, like a full, I just want to kill this guy build. Um, these are at 48 stacks. Fine. Fine. If you're going for a, I just want to kill this guy build, you can go Necronomicon. I would not recommend it. Necronomicon is very risky. Um, but I, I got to stack it real quick. Hold on. 
Okay. So what Necronomicon does is it lowers your protections, but gives you 50 intelligence per stack. You can see my intelligence right there is at 718. Uh, but if I remove my face cam, you can see that I have 16 physical protection and negative six magical protection. So it's not very ideal to go Necronomicon in any kind of competitive setting or ranked or anything like that. Uh, but my God, does it do damage? Look at my ult. Um, it's insane. Like you do, you do so much damage with this build. The three does 1,456 by itself. The one, the one does 2,400 damage by itself. Even your two, even your two does 721 damage. <laughs> so you can see, you can see how this could be a little bit insane. Um, <laughs> You can see how, how going Necronomicon with Soul Reaver is a little bit insane. Does Anubis Alt and one go through walls? Yes, it does. Anubis alt and one does go through walls. The two does not. But the alt, yeah, it does. Um, what starter would I go for this build? I would go, oh, where are the starter, starter ends right here. I would probably personally go Sands of Time, like Pendulum, because it's, you don't really need Conduit Gem. I guess Conduit Gem is actually more damage, huh? Yeah, you can also blink and ult. This is kind of more advanced, obviously. But you can um you can blink on someone while casting your ult. Like obviously I don't expect uh I don't expect people to do that a lot of times, but you can blink while casting in Smite 2. Alright, cool. So that's a couple of builds for Anubis. That's Anubis' passive and abilities. Let's uh, continue. <clears throat> Boop. An ally has left the game. Gods, Ares, enter practice. Oh, uh, by the way, I just want to say real quick. The auto build is actually good. Um, I would recommend... If you if you're nervous about actually building the items, I would recommend that you play your first day or two just using the auto build and seeing what auto build like actually buys, and then seeing how that that feels in game while you're playing. Uh, it does make a big difference. So, so yeah. All right, uh, Ares obviously is auto attacks, hundred percent strength, twenty percent intelligence. Nothing new there. Uh, his passive is completely different than it was in Smite 1. So in Smite 1, you gained power based off your auras. But in Smite 2, you actually gain an aura around you. Um, <clears throat> does it say how big the aura is? It doesn't say how big the aura is. But you gain an aura around you to give to yourself and everyone around you based off your protections and your cooldown rate. So protections give you strength. And cooldown rate gives you intelligence, which is like, uh, cooldown rate is basically just, it's just the percentage CDR like it was in Smite 1. Um, except it's not percentage anymore. I have a chart. I'll show you that after. Uh, so his one is going to scale completely off of, oh, actually interesting. His So the initial hit, the initial hit of your one does, it scales off of strength, but then the scaling tick damage after the initial hit scales off your intelligence. That's very interesting. Your three scales off your intelligence. Your alt scales off of strength. Okay. Weird. You could actually build Ares as a strength character. Interesting. That's cool. All right. Well, 
let's level up real quick. Mana, level 20. Get the bot to level 20 so I don't insta-kill him. All right. So, Ares 1 is... Why do I have 770 intelligence? Okay, that's definitely bugged. Oh, it's because I have infinite cooldown on. Because you gain intelligence based on your cooldown rate. So, so I have 20 intelligence now when I have no build. But if I put on infinite cooldown, it gives me 770 intelligence. So let me turn off cooldowns now so I don't look like I'm doing the most insane damage ever. Uh, so the one, it's the same as smite. One, where you can chain three times. Um, if you land your initial chain, you can recast it two more times. Let me put on reduced cooldowns. No, I can't. Okay. I'm just waiting for my cooldown to come up. So you can see if you watch the one, when I hit my first chain, there will be a little thing that goes around, a little timer that goes around the ability to let you know how long you have to shoot out your second chain and then subsequently your third chain. So you see that little timer? As long as you shoot that chain before that timer runs out, you can keep shooting your chains. All uh, you know, up to three, obviously. Uh, something that is very cool. Your three obviously is the exact same from Smite One. It just it's a little roast and toaster. That's all it is. But something that's very cool in um in Smite Two is that you can actually use your one while casting your three so i can three and then chain and then chain and then chain and you can do that while your three is active so you don't actually have to wait out your three to burst damage like if someone is running away like damn i want to get the damage on my three but i wish i could chain to stop his jump you can do them at the same time which is actually i mean I shouldn't have to say this, but it's a very nice quality of life change. Um, and yeah, the uh, I've already gone over the scaling of them. I've uh, you know the two. It's a little bit weird. It's a little different than it was in Smite uh, in Smite One again, because in Smite One I think you gained protections and HP five. In Smite Two you gain protections and basic attack damage, uh, but it's an aura around you, so. Obviously, it's not just you that gains this basic attack damage. It's everyone, so it's better for your your ADC player. Um, but when you hit an enemy god, the duration is actually extended. Uh, so you can see here, I use it. I have, I have five seconds, right? If I hit the enemy god, I get up to six seconds again. So, like, let me show you that one more time. After you hit an enemy god for the third time, your two will reset its cooldown on you. So you can see the buff right here. And then I'll go one, two, and then the third hit. Boom. It's going to reset my cooldown. Or, or it's going to reset my buff duration on the two. So it's going to last even longer. And it's not only auto attacks that does that, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure your three will reset it. Okay, I lied. It is only auto attacks that do it. Oh no, it's not. Okay. It's actually, it procs once per ability. Interesting. So my three and my one and one auto attack will proc it. Or my one and two auto attacks. Or my three and two auto attack. Any three forms of damage will proc your, your buff to reset its buff duration. Interesting. And then the alt is, I mean, it's kind of the same, but it's also, it's, it, there's a new aspect to it. So it's the same in the sense where you alt someone and you pull them in and they get, they, they, uh, get stunned when they get brought to you. However, however, and this is, this is the crazy part. I wish I had cooldowns on. Um, so I can't show you it for a while, but. Um, he actually lands 
and stuns, even if he didn't pull somebody with the chains, he will still smash down on the ground, dealing uh, damage in an area around him and stunning anyone on him. So like, let's say I altered these things. I wouldn't actually chain them, but I would still land and do damage to them because it's just an additional part to his his alt now. Reset cooldowns. Oh, thank you so much. So I can alt this. I can land. And it will still do damage. Um, Even though I didn't actually chain anyone. So... There's like... Let's say I'm like, oh man, I missed I missed the Ymir with my chain. I could still walk up and stun him and deal damage by landing on top of him. So it's actually beneficial sometimes. Like normally as Ares ult, you're like, oh, I want to ult him and bring him back to my team, right? Like that still is a case. But if you think that they might have beads, if you, if you think they have beads, it could even just be possible that you ult and go towards them and follow them around so that you can stun them and deal additional damage. Because like I said, like, it's not a small amount of damage. It straight up kills these things, man. You know, it does a lot of damage. And it is super, super good. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Kuzubo, would you mind making me a build for Ares? Just like a generic uh, support build for Ares. Kuzunbo is my uh, my Giga Brain support player for my team. Uh, let me look through the Discord, see if he made any builds for me. Uh, he did type one. He did type one. Okay. So, let's see. There's Thebes. The Charm. The Talisman of Purification, which is just beads, basically. Um, Spirit Robe. Spirit Robe is so broken in this game. Um, Stone of Binding. And Oni Hunter. All right, so I have, let me take my face cam off so you can see. I have 186 physical protections, 239 magical protections, uh, but then I use my two. I have 216 physical and 269 magical, so I am fairly tanky, but on top of that, I have 143 physical protections and I have active items. So this first active item, which is this little mushroom, is you drop it down. And it's going to heal. It's basically meditation. It's basically meditation for your team. The second little active item I have is, um, I did not mean to press that, is beads, but it's your whole team. So you can buy as an item beads, no starter, and there's stacks, so it adds 65 of each protection. That is true. That is true. Stacking Thebes. And getting CC'd, you're basically at like 300 of each protection with this build. Uh, but anyways, Beads is an AoE. Uh, the Talisman of Purification is Beads, but it's AoE for your entire team as long as they're close to you. Uh, it's it's very OP. Um, can I set Team Chaos, apply settings to bot? So I can Beads this, and you can see that Ymir also Beads. Like, it's very loud, by the way. But Ymir also gets CC immune. So it's it's really good for supports to buy. And also, this mushroom heals him too. So there's your uh, your generic like tank build, Ares build. Um Does binding for transcendence for giggles? No, that's that's a bad idea. The Hussar wing is OP. 
Yeah, I'll agree. What starter? You're going to go War Flag for your starter. I'm not buying starters because um because you can't change starters once you buy them. So, I'm just not buying them at all. Why am I over here? I'm dying. Help. Okay. Uh, set level 20, infinite mana. Get bot to level 20. All right. <clears throat> so Athena, 100% strength, 20% intelligence, as always. The passive is the exact same as the uh, passive from Smite 1. Basically, when you use an ability, you get a ranged auto attack. Um, however, that ranged auto attack has 70% intelligence scaling and 125 strength scaling. So that the, the ranged auto is definitely going to do more damage than my normal auto. As you can see, my normal auto, 54. My ranged auto, 68. Sorry, my nose is G. Um, the one... <coughs> Pookie Bear, what up, Grayley? The one scales off of strength and is a dash. It's, again, the same thing as my one. It's just a charge up, dash, boop, you hit them. And uh, they get slowed by 30%. And they also... You gain protections when you hit an enemy god, which I did not know. You actually gain this buff right here that increases your physical and magical protections by 35 plus 10% of how much protection you have actually built. You get a lot tankier when you hit someone with your one, which I actually didn't know before reading the ability right now. I can just, just own them. I can just be so tanky. Anyways, scales off of strength, does damage. It's a little bit of a charge up. Uh, 0.66 seconds, so two-thirds of a second to charge that up, and then you hit them, slow them down, get tankier, and do a little bit of damage. The two, same thing as Smite 1 again. It's going to scale off intelligence, though, not strength. Do a little bit of damage and taunt them towards you. Um, And the taunt duration actually scales an additional 0.4 seconds, so you can gain... So you can see the taunt duration is 1.35 seconds. You can actually get that up to 1.75 seconds by having um, 300 item protections, which if you're Athena, you probably will have 300 item protections unless you're like jungle Athena or some shit. Fight. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, pretty much the same thing as my one. You're just going to taunt them, do normal stuff. The three, again, exact same thing as my one. You're going to place down these soldiers. It's going to do the initial damage. It's going to wait a second, and then it's going to do an, a, an additional hit of damage that's a little bit stronger. This scales off intelligence and only intelligence, just like the two. Uh, and then the ultimate is where it gets a little crazy. So let me switch this guy over to my team. So when you alt someone as Athena, uh, previously they got like in smite one, they just got some damage reduction. They got like 30% damage reduction while you're charging up and that's it. Your alt now, while you're charging up your alt on your teammate, they gain a health shield equal to 12.5% of your max health plus that additional 250 base. So if you build a lot of health on Athena, they're going to get a big ass shield. Um, so Athena is very like just HP, just protection. That's all you want on her. Um, and then you're going to deal damage based on your intelligence with a 640 damage base, which is nuts. So as you can see, when I alt him here, um, You'll see him gain a big shield. Wherever there are gods in need. And then obviously I'm going to land and deal damage. Uh, something also that is worth noting. <clears throat> in Smite 1, if you kill the enemy god that's alting towards... Like, let's say you kill the Ymir while the Athena is alting Ymir. Athena won't show up there. Uh, in Smite 2, Athena... If you alt someone, if I alt this Ymir, 
I'm going there even if he died. Like, if Ymir died right now, I would still land in that location. So, it's a lot more risky in Smite 2. Like, normally in, in Smite 1, you're like, oh, that guy might die. I'll ult him. Maybe that damage mitigation will keep him alive. In Smite 2, if you ult him, you are going there. You're going to be in the position he is in. If he's 1v5ing and you ult to help, you are also going to be 1v5ing when you land if he dies. So, keep that in mind. That is that is big important. Uh, as for build, it's going to be, I'm pretty sure, the same thing as the other build. I'll just actually build the war flag. Sorry. Uh, not crit chance. Go this and this and this, this, um, honey hunters or spirit robe. It's like a very, again, this is just a very generic, um, I can't actually stack my items, but yeah, oop, oop, upgrade that. And then if I hit this, uh, he's on my team, so I can't. Hold on. Let me change teams on him there. So if I hit this, uh, oh, let me take my face cam off so you can see the, the numbers. So you can see my protections at 216 and 269. Obviously, you can stack up thieves and get a lot more. But um, if I hit this, because the protections I gain are actually based off me stealing these protections, right? So... I go from 216 magical, or I'm sorry, 216 physical to 272 magical. And 269 magical to 331 magical. So it's a massive difference. And then obviously the taunt is going to be a longer duration. Uh, because I have over 300 protection built. Which means I'm adding an extra 0.4 seconds to this, <clears throat> to this taunt here. So it's almost two seconds. And then also, because I have so much health, you can see the shield that I give my teammate is going to be way bigger than what it was before. All right. Fantastic. Next god. An ally has Oop. left the game. That is Athena again. Bacchus. There's a lot of guardians in a row, huh? <clears throat> Although I will say, Bacchus is kind of OP. How quick um, I think Bacchus snack. will be changed. <laughs> maybe, maybe not like dramatically, I guess. But he's very strong right now. Let's level this up. Boop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop. Let's get drunk. Here we go. Okay. His auto attack. 100 strength, 20 intelligence. <clears throat> His buffs are pretty nuts. So you gain... By the way, these the first little notch here is considered, uh, I think, tipsy. Yeah, this first notch here is considered tipsy. Like once you're above it. The second notch here, once you're above that, is considered smashed. So, keep that in mind for the buffs. <clears throat> when you are smashed, which for the most part you're going to be smashed, so that's really the only one you need to look at, is you'll have 10% extra protections of each, uh, 10 intelligence, and 8 strength, just because you're drunk as shit. That, that's, that's it. You'll just have extra protections... And extra damage because you're drunk. That's what your passive is. All right. Um, your one. I, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna do the build first. I'm gonna build first because he has a new type of scaling. that uh is in smite 2 that was never in smite 1 and it's actually scaling off of protection so your one when you drink your next basic attack will scale 
damage wise based off your protections so um Bacchus is a magical damage god uh, but I don't know if I said that about the other ones but obviously Anubis is a magical damage god Athena is a magical damage god Ares is a magical damage god Bacchus is a magical damage god on her is a physical damage god and Neith is a physical damage god those are the only gods I've done so far but your one it's going to drink it's going to give you a little bit of a heal it's going to increase your strength and your intelligence and then it's going to give you damage um, based on your protection. So this auto attack you see here, it did 298 additional damage. Like, like every auto attack, I'm doing 63, right? But I do this, my auto attack hits for 81 because I have additional strength and intelligence. So that helps the scaling of your auto attack. But then the... The tick damage is 298. Um, so it's pretty insane. Now, something that I would probably do on Bacchus is I would go Polynomicon. I I would sacrifice one of my defensive items for Polynomicon because look at this. It's 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 pretty good. It's an extra 55 damage. Polynomicon in uh Smite 2, by the way does not have an internal cooldown so like i can do this boom do this boom do this boom do this boom. and every single every single ability um will give me a polynomicon auto but anyways his one scales off protections which means it does a shit ton of damage like actually too much damage 282 um his two scales off of strength and protections you can imagine why he's a little bit strong because you build him so tanky your two is going to be doing a lot of damage um just because you're scaling off of these protections if you use your one and then your two you know you can imagine like because your protections are so high you're doing a lot of damage also my face cam is off so you can see the protection um yeah scales off strength and protections um and if you're tipsy, the enemies are slowed. I think also if you're smashed, the enemies are slowed. And they are slowed by how much percentage? It doesn't actually say the percentage that they're slowed by. But they are slow. Um, the three is displacement immune, just like Anubis 1 is. And the it has a stun duration of 1.25 seconds at max rank. And once you get that last tick of your burp on them... It will stun them. Now, this is worth noting. Uh, by the way, Hawken and Daddy Nasty, thank you for the prime. You don't need to hit all ticks of your three to stun. You just need to hit your last one. And if you hit your last tick of your of your three, it will stun. As you can see. So yeah. Um, it scales off your intelligence. Whereas your two scales off strength. And your one scales off protections. Your alt scales off intelligence as well. So obviously intelligence is a bit better to build than strength. And your alt is just going to give you... Um, it's it's going to do a lot of damage, obviously. Like it always does. Boom. And it's going to intoxicate them, which makes their movement a little bit wonky. But what it also does, and I don't think it does this in Smite 1, but it's going to give you... A strength and intelligence buff, 44 strength and 60 intelligence, for six seconds. Um, during the duration after you alt, because apparently you get mad over all the wine that you spilled when you ulted. So if you alt and then you burst, it's actually more damage. Obviously, it's a little harder because they're gonna be a little wonky, but Yeah, you can see, like, as a full tank, as a full tank hitting another Guardian with base defenses, like, the burst damage you're doing is, it, it's, it's a lot. It's so much. Bacchus is a little bit overtuned. He did 2,500 burst damage there. 
yeah, that that's Bacchus. He's pretty OP, in my opinion. Quite the Chad. Hopefully we get off the Guardians soon. What's next in the B territory? Is there another B god? Bologna. All right. Bologna is, in my opinion, probably one of the worst gods in the game right now. <laughs> uh, she doesn't really have very good scaling and stuff like that. So it's not really worth... Oh, let me put my face cam back on. It's not really worth doing. But, um... Let's set level 20. Boop, boop. So level 20. Uh, did I not? There we go. 100% strength and 20% intelligence off the auto attack. And you gain 7% of your heal. So 7% of your physical protections are gained as a heal when you're, when you're auto attacking with your three. Her passive did get changed. It's a ton to read. But basically, each different weapon gives you a different passive now. Um, when you have your sword and your shield out, which is your your one, when you have your sword and your shield out, you get protections. When you have your hammer out, you get a percent strength increase. When you have your three out, you gain attack speed with your passive. And um, no matter what kind of passive you have, you always gain movement speed. You can see the numbers right there. 3% attack speed per stack, 3% strength per stack, 1.5% attack speed per stack, and then four protections. So when you're one, you can see my, my passive is blue. I'm getting protections. As you can see from this, I'm getting physical and magical protections from that buff, but I'm also getting the move speed. My If I three, my passive turns yellow and I gain a movement speed from a normal passive and then attack speed because I'm in my three. If I use my two, you can see my passive turns red. I'm now gaining an increase in percentage strength plus the movement speed. Um, and then in my normal stance, which is just like, I gotta wait for my hammer to run out. This one, all you do, it's white and you gain just movement. Speed. That is her passive. It's pretty good. It's honestly a pretty strong passive. Um, the one, by the way, Bologna is a physical god. Um, and Box is a magical god. But the one scales off of strength and protection. So the tankier you are, the more damage the one does. It slows and then it does reflecting just like it does in Spy 1. Every third basic attack you do grants an additional block stack. The first time you hit an enemy god like this, poof, you gain one block stack, as you can see right here. And then every three auto attacks, I will gain an additional stack of block stacks. You can, you can see right here above my health bar, they have that. They also have this little number right here on this. So there's two different indicators. The maximum amount of block stacks you can have is three. Um, and they do 25% of the damage blocked is how much damage you're dealing back, plus a little bit of your protections. Uh, the two scales strictly off strength, and it is the exact same in uh, Smite 2 as it is in Smite 1. You just circle around and you slam down. And it becomes AoE auto attacks. And that's it. Uh, the three, like the, the two really doesn't have anything about it, by the way. Like that, that's actually just it. It just goes around and slams and you get AoE autos. <laughs> that's all it is. <clears throat> the three will disarm, which means that they cannot auto attack. That's what a disarm is. So they won't be able to auto attack for pretty much two seconds. 1.9 seconds. Uh, seems a bit weird that it's 1.9 and not two seconds but what do i know uh, it scales off your strength and every single basic attack you do will heal you for again going back to your passive right here will heal you for a base amount plus seven percent of your protections so it's not every third basic attack like it was in smite one where it's like boom boom the third hit will heal you for like 30 hp or something it is actually Every single basic attack will heal you for the same amount. As you can see, I'm healing 14 per hit. And then the alt is, again, it's the same thing in uh, Smite 2 as it is in Smite 1. 
you gain it's a buff in an area like this entire area gains a buff that initial area the the first little circle you see is like that's the stun duration area so like i land here he gets stunned and it does damage um but the area around you gets 80 per or i'm sorry that's that's how much damage it does you gain 48 strength plus 10 percent of the bologna's protection 62 intelligence plus 10 percent of the bologna's protections and then you gain 35 protections plus 10 percent of the bologna's protections and you also gain 35 magical protections plus 10 percent of the bologna's magical protections so um this buff can get really really big for your team if you have a very tanky bologna on your team uh it's pretty insane But yeah, so if you don't hit this little circle, by the way, it doesn't do any damage and it doesn't stun. But you still get the buff, as you can uh, you can see in my. Hold on, let me turn my face cam off one more time. Oop. So you can see, I have seventy-eight physical protections and fifty-eight magical. I have eighty-seven strength and zero intelligence. I all now I have one hundred forty-nine strength, seventy-six intelligence, one hundred twenty-one physical prots, and ninety-eight magical prots. And that's just because. I am in my alt. I haven't even built anything yet. And now let me see if I can get a build from Matrix. Um, can I get a Bologna build at Matrix? Let's see if Matrix can give me a Bologna build. Give me. Yeah, he hasn't really given me a Bologna build, but I can build one basically myself. So Bologna, <clears throat> you're probably going to go. Hmm. Honestly, with how good, <clears throat> with how good protections are with Bologna, I'd probably go Sundering Axe as a starter. And then obviously Berserker Shield, I think is probably the best item in the game. Um, You want a lot of attack speed. So you might be going... Like, oh God, sorry, my throat hurts. You're going to go berserkers. You're going to go shoguns. Those are basically completely guaranteed items that you're going to go. Uh, and then you're just going to go like a lot of protections. Like you could even go thieves to be honest, but if you're solo lane, you're not really going to get a lot of minion assists. So maybe thieves isn't like the best play. But you could go like Ruinous Ankh, which is really good because it's got double protections. You could go the um, Hussar wing, which is, it's it's basically just sprint. It's sprint for your whole team, but it's also 25 protections of each. Um, You know, you could go, I'm just looking for like kind of mixed prods because mixed prod items. Oh, I have the storm and shifter shield, obviously. Those items are really good. They give both prods and strength. And this one gives you obviously strength and whatever. Wings is only for you, right? Wings is a sprint for you. Yeah. I thought it was your whole team, but I guess it is just a sprint for you. What's the sprint for the team? Because there is one, isn't there? Hmm. This one. Okay, so you're gonna build Stampede. Not uh not Hussar Wing. Stampede is better. So yeah, anyways. Uh now you can see, let me turn my face come off one more time. Just how big this buff can get. I have 263 prots uh for physical, 183 magical, and 177 strength. Obviously zero intelligence. I alt now I have 325 physical prots, 236 magical. 270 strength and 88 intelligence. So, um, yeah, the, the buff is just going to be massive for everyone. Obviously, you can see my, um, my one is going to gain damage based off my prots. So, my one actually does a significant amount of damage when I actually land it. But yeah, that's Bologna. Very nice.
Death Toll is a better starter for her. Mm. I don't know. She scales really well off the prots, to be honest with you. An ally has left the game. All right. Kernanos into practice. So Kernanos Essential. is a little weird because this god, she does, but life steals OP. That's true also. But Kernanos um, is weird because you can build him both crit and like you can build him both strength and intelligence builds and they both work really well for different reasons. Um, so obviously his auto attack is 100% strength, 20% intelligence. His passive is the the uh, AOE, like when you're close to them, you do additional damage. You see the little 13 number? The little 13 number is basically what your passive is doing here. 52 is my auto and then 13 is the little other one. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, so the one, it's going to scale off of intelligence or or strength if your strength is higher. But basically, your healing stance is going to have 10 base with a 15% uh, intelligence scaling. Your summer damage dealing is going to have 22% of your intelligence scaling or your strength, whichever is higher. Your fall uh, form is going to have 25% of their protection shred. Uh, scaling up an additional 5% based on your intelligence. And then your winter is going to have 14% slow plus 2.5% of your intelligence. So obviously intelligence on him is the way to go uh, if you want to utilize your one. And, but basically to make it very simple, uh, green stance is a heal. Yellow stance is additional damage. Red stance is protection shred. And uh, blue stance is a slow. And those get better and better the more intelligence you have. Uh, your two is going to be a root. It's this little circle. It stops at the first enemy got hit. Or it stops at the first um, minion hit. So this never goes through. And it doesn't go, go through walls either. It stops at the wall. Um... And if you hit someone with it, it is going to root them. And it's going to do an additional tick of damage. And then a little bit... It's going to do an additional burst of damage. And then a small amount of tick damage after. <clears throat> the initial damage is going to scale off both strength and intelligence. More so the intelligence. And the tick damage scales strictly off intelligence. Um... The root duration is only one second, but it is still very good. Uh, in Smite 1, the 2 is a root and a cripple, but in Smite 2, the root is only, or the, the 2 is only a root. It's not a cripple in Smite 2. You can actually jump it. If you get hit by this root, you can still leap and jump and dash and whatever the heck. So, you just can't actually walk away, you know? Uh, smite three, it, or smite three, the three for Kernanos is a hundred percent strength scaling. All it's gonna do is dash. That's it. It's just dash. Scales off of strength. It dashes. Doesn't do anything special. Just just does some ouchies to anything. How? Dashes through gods. Dashes through minions. Uh, doesn't dash through walls. Don't really need to say that, but yeah, that's all it is. A little dash. And then the alt is going to be the same as in Smite 1 again. It's a little polymorph in a duration. There's a little wind up and then they get polymorphed. Uh, and they also get slowed while polymorphed. So, uh, you know, if you have a hard time hitting your autos. Slowing them while they're polymorphed is a, is a good thing for you. <clears throat> it scales 100% off intelligence. It's got a 2.25 second polymorph duration. And that is it. 
That's all it does. Um, now, there's two kinds of builds you can go with with CERN. Uh, again, I'm not going to build starter items. You can pick the starter items yourself. But uh, there's the crit build, which... Actually, there's there's three builds you can go with Kernanos. I think, actually. Uh, let me see. Where's Cars? Cars said he sent me a build, but I don't see any builds. Um... Sure, the auto cancel on the three. Yeah, but that's more advanced. That's not really something I need to show. But I, I guess I can show it. Like, you can auto three cancel auto. Like, Anyways, you you can use your three. Um, builds right here. That's a build for Kernanos. I'm not I'm not using that build. Oh, okay. He sent me a Bruiser Fenrir build as my Kernanos build, as if I'm gonna build full tank on Kernanos and and tell people to go build that in their ranked games. <laughs> That'd be crazy. <clears throat> All right. So this is one build you can do. Gonna go Devos, Dagger Frenzy, Executioner, Hastened, Soul Dem, and Death Metal. Okay, so this build is the non-crit build. It's going to give you uh, 252 strength, but 100 intelligence. It's going to give you a little bit of crit chance because Death Metal has 20% crit chance on it. Um, I can put my face cam back on, by the way. Um, And then you, you notice I have two active items right here. And what those do is the Dagger Frenzy gives me... Uh, 30% attack speed and 40 basic attack damage. And Death Metal grants me an additional 20% attack speed plus a lot of strength and intelligence. So if I pop both of them, right now I'm hitting... Okay, well, that was a crit. And I'm hitting 162 or 270 on crits. If I pop them both, I hit 200. And what are the crits? 410. So I... I do a, a significant more damage. Significant amount more damage with them both pop. So this is one build you can do. Uh, and then the other build you can do is the obvious, just the crit. Um, the crit build, which is just going to be like, you know, 300 damage crits very consistently. Uh, with your passive doing, you know, 47. You have Hasten still, you have some Life Steal still, you have Pen still. Um, and then the third build you can do is actually completely different because it's a, it's an intelligence build. Um and the intelligence build is pretty crazy. Uh let's go do 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 Soul Reaver. Oh, you could go Spear of Deso. Uh, hold on. Rod. And... Dreamer's Idol is really good. I mean, World Stone is really good. I would probably go Poly, to be honest. Or no, I'd probably go... You probably want some life steal, right? So I, I might go bloodbound. Yeah. So basically, your autos are not going to do a lot of damage, right? Only one sixteen. However, your two is going to do. 
eleven hundred. I think you go trans, right? Yeah, but I'm avoiding, I'm avoiding any double stacking in this video because they're gonna nerf double stacking in the next patch, so I don't want to have that in this video. Um, your three. Also, you can see my life steal. I had fifty eight plus eleven, uh, because my life steal scales off intelligence, and this is an intelligence focused build, so uh, you heal a lot with this build. Uh, the three doesn't do really anything. Okay, okay, I lied. It does 460. But it scales off strength, so it's not going to do as much. And this is crazy. Look at the alt. Let the hunt begin. <laughs> 873 damage from the alt. It's it's actually nuts. I don't even have my, my Book of Thoughts stacked. And I also don't have a uh, starter item either. But yeah, Intelligence Kurnanos is probably my personal favorite way to play him. I don't think Crit Kurnanos is bad or the first build is bad. But like, look at the burst damage here. That's, that's without auto attack, you know? That's a 2100 damage burst against a Guardian uh, with no auto attack. Yeah, his summer stance does damage based on intelligence. So, like, I get an extra 82 damage per auto attack as intelligence, um, as intelligence Kurnanos. But, yeah. Pretty insane stuff. And those, that's, that's Kurnanos for you. Intelligence, Kurnanos mid, strength, Kurnanos ADC. Yeah, pretty much. That's generally what you want to do. If you're ADC, Kurnanos, you're going to go crit. More than likely go crit, because crit is really strong right now. An ally has left the game. All right. Let's chalk it up. Boop, boop, boop. All right. <clears throat> Chalk. Auto attacks, 100% strength, 20% intelligence. His passive is uh, that uh, it's actually different from Smite 1. In Smite 1, you go 5 auto attacks, and then your next ability does not cost mana. In Smite 2, your next ability does not cost mana, and it heals you. Um, it also, as, as you saw, it heals me for 20% of my intelligence. Um, which, you know, in this case, it's a base of 10, but I don't have any items. So it's, that's the passive. It's pretty good. It basically, same passive as my one, but a little bit of a heal. Uh, his one scales off strength and intelligence. You throw it down, it's the exact same thing. The only difference is in Smite 2, you can take back your axe. Uh, let me turn off. Reduce cooldowns for this. I can throw my axe, and then I can pick it back up. Okay, well, it didn't let me because my other axe was still. I'll give me a second. Let me show you. I can throw my axe, and then I can pick it back up. So, like, if... Let's say you're, like chasing someone and you don't want to teleport to your axe you can throw it down pick it back up and then use your two without teleporting so we'll actually still do damage uh that's the only difference between smite one and smite two um the two is again it's the same thing as smite two you gain protections um whatever like every enemy you hit you gain protection so if i hit three enemies here my two i will gain three stacks of increased protections and magical protections um, and it also does damage based on strength scaling. Uh, so as you can see, like based on his passive being intelligence, his one being, uh, strength and intelligence, his three being only intelligence and his alt being both strength and intelligence. You want to build chalk as a hybrid character. Um, intelligence chalk is very, very strong. Strength chalk is very strong. Protection chalk is very strong. They're all really, really good. Um, 
But yeah, so minions provide one stack every minion you hit. And gods provide two stacks. You can have a max of four stacks instead of six. Smite one, you can have six stacks. In Smite two, you can have four stacks. Um, the stacks get better based off how much intelligence you have. So if you have a ton of intelligence, you gain more protection from your two. Um, the three is, I mean, it's the exact same thing as in Smite one. When you use your three, it is a 25% slow and in a 20% attack speed slow. And if you use, let me turn on reduce cooldowns again, sorry. If you use your three while your one is down, it is doubled up basically like, so <clears throat> right now he has, he is 20 25% slowed and 20% attack speed. If he is in my circle and the circle of um, the big ax, it's actually a 50% slow because it does double up. It's a 50% slow and a 40% attack speed slow. Which is definitely good to know. The heal is based off your intelligence. And then the alt, it scales 110% off of your strength. Chalk slow stack. Yeah, they do. Uh, 100% or 110% strength on 100% intelligence. When you alt... They are knocked up and silenced. Silenced means that they cannot cast any abilities. <clears throat> and you are CC immune and gain a 70% damage mitigation. So if something was going to hit you for a thousand damage while you were casting your alt, that same 1000 damage thing would instead do 300 because I don't know reasons, I guess. Um, and that's, that's all the ult. Silence, knock up, a bit of damage, and some mitigation. Now here's where the fun starts to happen. Because Chalk has so many good builds that you can do. Okay. Um, so, this one's a bit weird because Chalk... Normally double stacks. Right now he double stacks every game. You go Book of Thoth and you go Transcendence. Um, because I, I said I'm not going to double stack ever in this video. I'm just going to go Book of Thoth. And then I'm going to go uh, Hybrid Items. So like there's this item which is really, really good. Gives you Strength and Intelligence. A bunch of HP. Um, there's Eye of the Storm which is very good. Gives you Protections, Strength, Magical Protections, HP. Um, and then Spear Robe, probably one of the best items in the game. Stone of Binding, obviously very, very good on Chalk. And Mystical Mail is just a good, like, finisher of it, right? Um, obviously, if you don't want to go Mystical Mail, you could go something like, uh, I don't know. You go, like, Shield of the Phoenix. Like, this last item is really flex, to be honest. You can go pretty much everything. You could go... Manetta Charm, you could go Oni Hunters, but you know, just for the sake of the build, I'd go Mystical. You're probably going to go Mystical soon. They said they're going to change Eye of the Storm. Eye of the Storm is the exact same that it will be in the next patch, except it will have an additional um, active effect to it. So I still think it's going to be a good item. What up, Fallen? So yeah, there's one build you can do. Uh, the second build you can do is basically full damage. Which I would not recommend if you're playing him solo, but I have played Chalk in the jungle, and full damage Chalk jungle is freaking insane. Um, and I personally built him intelligence based. So, um, I'm gonna do what I did in my game, which is Mirrodin and Obsidian Shard. So I'm gonna have a bunch of intelligence power so my three is going to heal me for 52 each each tick <clears throat> which i don't have to tell you is a lot um but yeah so if you use your mirrodin the next ability that you use that's not your ultimate will have no cooldown so what i like to do is i like to use my one and then alt and then pick up my one and use it again and then use my two <laughs> so as you can see, 
it's a lot of damage. <laughs> this is how I played Chalk in the jungle. You probably should not pick Chalk, chalk mid, but if you do, it can work out for you. But yeah, for the most part, you're just going to do the first build that I did with Chalk. Can you show again, please? Sure. Sure, let's reset cooldowns. So I'm going to pop Mirrodin. <clears throat> I'm going to one, and then alt, and then one, and then two. And it's 2,400 damage burst. Even if you don't have your Mirrodin up, you can still do this. Which is, which is 1,800 damage. It's very fun. My personal favorite way to play him, but you probably should all just stick to the first build. I'll be honest. Not because you're bad, but actually because you're better than me and I do dumb stuff. That's the main reason. An ally has all right. the game. On to Fenrir. Okay. I'm getting tired, man. Sheesh. Let's level up. Why can I not apply this level 20 to the bot? Apply. There we go. Nice. Yeah, I'm doing every god. Um, so Fenrir's auto attacks, 100% strength, 20% intelligence. As I said, every auto attack does. Uh, the passive is the same as it is in Smite 1. It's the runes. And uh, each ability does a, a different thing when you have five runes. You get a rune <clears throat> by auto attacking. Um, let me use those runes. You also get a rune for... Hitting something with your three. So hitting a god with your three gives you four runes. Um, you also get a rune by damaging someone with your one. Apparently you get three of them. All right. Now that we know how to get the runes, let's see how to use them. So your one scales off 75 percent strength and 40 percent of your protections so bruiser fenrir is very 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 good also lifesteal fenrir is very 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 good but anyways um your one is just a jump when you hit someone with it it does damage if you have maximum runes as you just saw there it will it will stun the enemy god um for 0.75 seconds. So do this. So right here, because I have five runes, my one will now stun. If I don't have five runes, my one will not stun, but it will give me three runes. As you can see. Um now the one is kind of weird. Let me uh do this real quick. Because as you can see right here, it has a 15 second cooldown. But if I land on an enemy god, it only has a 10 second cooldown because when you hit an enemy god with your one, not an enemy minion, just an enemy god, it will reduce the cooldown of this ability by 30%. Even if it's not, even if you don't have rune stack. So like right there, I hit the enemy god, it's a 10 second cooldown. If I miss the enemy god, it will be a full 15 second cooldown, which I'll show you here in a second. There you go. Um, put on cooldowns again. Um, <clears throat> so my two is giving it's it's basically a self buff. The buff lasts for twenty or for for six seconds. It gives you twenty percent life steal and twenty five percent attack speed and fifty five strength. It's a massive stim buff. Um, oof, if you uh, use it when you're empowered everyone around you gains lifesteal so like 
Uh, let me, let's see. Because I have five ruins, I'll just do this right now. If I use my two right now, because I have five runes and I use my two, Ymir will also, I guess there's no indication that he has it, but he will also have increased lifesteal uh, and a, an additional 20% lifesteal because I'm using my two next to an ally. Um, but that's the only benefit that you get for having max runes while you use your two. It also does not consume the runes on your two. But I will say, uh, your two instead, in Smite 1, it gives you two runes. In Smite 2, it gives you three runes. It gives you two runes. It's supposed to give you three. You see right here, it's supposed to say, if not empowered, gain three runes. I think it's bugged right now. It's supposed to give you three. Um, but what do I know? I guess it's bugged right now. But anyways, for future reference, just know the two is supposed to give you three runes. Um, the Brutalize, it is the exact same in Smite 2 as it is in Smite 1. It does four ticks of damage, and it follows the enemy. Um, you are displacement immune while channeling your three, meaning you cannot be pushed back or knocked up while casting your three. Um, you gain physical and magical protections. A If you're max level... You gain 45 of each protection while casting your three. Uh, let me turn off my face cam so you can actually just see that. So I have 76 physical protections and 56 magical. Now I have 141 and 121, aka. Why is that? That's way more than 45. Why is that so much? That might also be bugged. I'm getting like double my protection. I'm getting 75. It's five plus two per level. At level 20, that should be plus it's five plus 40, which is 45 of each. But I'm getting 65 of each. Interesting. Man, we are we are debunking things, that's for sure. Anyways, you get protections. That's the most important part. Um, when your three is empowered, you deal additional damage. Um and let me just get my thing up. So as you can see right now, I have done no damage. My three while empowered is gonna do 356. While not empowered going to do 315 so you're going to do a little bit more damage from your three when it's empowered not that much more damage it's based off your strength but it is going to be more damage and your alt is literally just the exact same thing in smite one you gain protections um you gain movement speed and you can alt someone you get to pick them up and run with them for a bit before displacing them somewhere else if you have Five runes. But does it actually say it does anything in Smite 3? Although it should. It, it does. Yeah. Okay. Well, it doesn't say it. But you gain increased protections. When you have maxed out runes. Like right now... I have 127 and then 104. And then if I alt again, when I have five runes, it should empower my, uh, my alt. It has 127, 104. I don't know. Fenrir is bugged as shit. I don't know what to tell you. Fenrir is bugged as shit. His three's bugged. His one's bugged. His two's bugged. His alt's bugged. And yet, he's one of the most overpowered gods in the game. Um, <clears throat> Speaking of, let me tell you why he's so overpowered. Um, you might notice that I'm buying crit chance on him. This is a, this is a definitely like a, well, hold on. Let me, let me buy this in the order I actually would. Um, <clears throat> I would go devil gloves. 
Lifesteal is very strong with him. Uh, so personally, I go triple lifesteal and then triple crit. This is how I build my Fenrir in the jungle because his three can crit. <laughs> now, I don't know if this is intended because clearly they that Fenrir is very bugged. But uh, Fenrir, Fenrir's three can crit. And, um... Oh, no, it's definitely intended. It said this ability can trigger both ability and basic attack item effects. So it is intended. This ability can critically strike. Okay. My mistake, this is actually intended to be able to crit. So this is how I build my Fenrir. Now, let me show you... Uh, why I built him with so much lifesteal. I'm going to stack my... I'm going to stack my... Uh, my devos real quick. All right? Can I actually just stack it faster off you? I can. I'm just stacking my devos real quick. Give me a second. Okay, so let me show you why I build triple lifesteal because lifesteal and smite one and lifesteal and smite two are completely different. Um, in smite one, lifesteal is only basic attack lifesteal. In smite two, lifesteal his own or, or lifesteal is all abilities. So I have 260 health right now. My three is going to heal me 400 health. Basically my one is going to heal me 171. If I use my two and then my three, it's going to heal me so much. Like I think triple lifesteal Fenrir is probably one of the hardest gods in the game to kill right now. All right. Let's see. I have 90 health. I went up to 1,000. I just healed basically 950 health. And I did 1,043 damage. I have like... Like 96% lifesteal. <laughs> it's pretty insane. And by the way, you might be thinking, wow, Sam, you just healed a thousand health. No way it gets better than that. It does. I'm going to show you. Let's see, uh, let's spawn, spawn. Okay. So I have 170 health. Now I have 1600. It's just 1500. I just healed 1500. And this, this isn't even like an exaggeration. This is like... I've done this in so many games that I've played Fenrir. It's, he's just that strong. Alright, I have I've 70... I have 80 health. 1500. I jumped from 1500 to 2000. I healed 500 HP from jumping. It's, it's, an enemy. it's actually dumb. A 
Okay, now obviously this one is not going to be like fair. But I just want to see what can happen. <laughs> I just want to see what happens. All right, I have 100 HP. I use my two and my three. That's why I like this build. That's why this build is my favorite. Now, I'm going to show you other builds you can do. But I'm just kind of enjoying myself right now. Check this out. I just healed 1,400. Okay. Anyways, this is how I jungle Fenrir. That's my build for him. Um, and let me get... So this is my soul laner's build. This is what he likes to do. He likes to go Typhons. And then he likes to go... Uh, Phoenix Shield. He likes to go Shoguns. He likes to go Mystical Mail. And he likes to go Stormbind. So this is what my... Um, my solo laner likes to build. Now, Typhons is also a gigantic lifestealer. So even though this is double lifesteal instead of triple lifesteal, Typhons only stat is 40% lifesteal. And Shield of the Phoenix... Gives you 2% of your maximum HP every time you hit someone with an ability. And that's a that's a per god basis, so. So um you can you can imagine this is also gonna. Yeah, that healed me. I mean, even even the tick damage is healing me. The tick damage. Mystical male heals you! Wait! Wait! Wait a second. I'm healing 70 health per second. All right. Well, Fenrir, everybody. Enjoy your two builds. Don't go auto attack Fenrir because uh, lifesteal Fenrir is better. Lifesteal ability based Fenrir is better than auto attack Fenrir. So just go one of those two. Just go one of those two builds. That's insane. That's An incredible. I love that. That was, that was very enjoyable. Ooh, Hades. Okay, I like Hades. Let me play. Nice. Boom, pow, pow. All right. So Hades, again, 100% strength, 20% intelligence on the auto attack. A passive is apply blight. Um, when they're blighted, they have 5% less strength and intelligence. Um, you can tell they're blighted because they have this little like aura on them it lasts for eight seconds you can see the aura will run out there you go um when they're blighted all of your abilities have an additional effect but let me just show you well not all of them some of them have an additional effect so your one is very simple it is intelligence based and you hit them oop, does some damage it's also a little dash if they are blighted when you hit them they are slowed as you can see by the little slow animation the slow is 40%, which is a significant. Um, and it lasts for two seconds. 
So the two, by the way, that's literally all the one does. The two is a silence, meaning they can't cast abilities. It also applies blight to them. Your one also applies blight. Um, but your two is a silence that applies blight. If they are blighted, then it is a fear, which means they can't do anything. They can't control the character while they're here. Um, and the fear has no scaling or anything. Oh, actually, it does have a scaling. If you are tankier, then your fear lasts longer. And so does your silence by an extra 0.4 seconds for both. Um, your three is intelligence focused. <clears throat> and you can get an additional heal. Uh, or not an additional heal, but you can get a scaling heal on your three by using protection. But basically, it's a detonate. Pop. Um, it doesn't apply blight. It's one of the only abilities in, in Hades kit that doesn't apply blight. But if they are blighted, and then you detonate, you can see that little that little extra 15 number right there. They take additional damage. And every additional person that is blighted will blow up doing uh, more and more damage. So... One person is blighted and you hit your three, it's plus 15. Two people are blighted, you hit your three, it's plus 30. Three people are blighted, you hit your three, it's plus 45. And obviously that damage scales up with how much intelligence you have, but yeah, doubles up. And then your heal scales off protections. <clears throat> and then your alt, this is the only thing that actually changed between Hades kit and Spite 1 and Spite 2 is you do the, the whole pillar of agony thing like, ooh, look, I'm so dangerous and scary and stuff. Right. Um, but in Smite 2, first off, it does a lot of effects, right? It does damage based off intelligence. It reduces their protections based on how much protections you have uh, and a percentage of their protections. It increases your protections, also increases how much protections you get from items. It does a lot of stuff. Uh, you can just read that because my voice hurts. Um, but the main part of it is that you can use one ability during your alt. So like normally you would like one and then you two and then you three, right? And then you would alt, but while you're alting, you get to use a free ability. So I can alt and three while alting and then three after alt. So it's very, very good. Or if you want, you can like alt and then fear them while alting like oh and then fear them while alting now you can only do one ability like i said during your alt you can't use multiple abilities you can only use one additional ability so you're gonna go like you can even dash by the way you can alt and then dash and it, your alt will continue afterwards so very sick is the free ability cooldown separate? Yeah, let me show you. Let me re let me turn off reduce cooldowns. So if I three, and then I alt, I can three immediately again because they have separate cooldowns. So like for instance, so to to just let's just be dramatic, right? I can, from here, I can blink one, alt one, and, and get down. Right? Or, or if you want, you can blink in, right? You can blink in, alt, and dash out. There's a lot of, like, nuance you can do with Hades alt. Does alt apply blight? Alt does apply blight. Yes. I think. It should. It does, yes. I didn't know if it was bugged or not. All right, so let's see. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. You can do, actually, you can do the same build that you did with, with, uh, chalk as you like Hades, like you can go, um, like a stacking item, something like, uh, book of Thoth, and then you can go like Titans conch, and then you could go like void stone, stone of binding. Anita's charm and like Hexstone, you know. So I have with this build, I have 140 of each protection. I have 178 uh, six intelligence, so my damage isn't going to be very, very high. As you saw, I only did a thousand damage burst there. However, when I alt, I am damn near unkillable, and my alt does a lot of damage. And my, um, my fear and my silence are going to be longer duration because I have, uh, the amount of protections you need for those things to work. And my heal is going to, or my detonate heal is going to heal me for a hundred per, you can see it's 95 because I have so much protection. So even though your damage is going to be less, you can like heal for a hundred detonate Heal for an additional 100 while having 300 of each protection. And then, like, get out of there, you know? <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. So this is one way you can build him. The other way you can build him is straight damage, like a Hades mid lane. Which, um, I've played mostly Hades solo, personally. But Hades mid lane's not terrible. There's better mid laners, but, you know, whatever. Obviously, Polynomicon and Hades is very, very strong. Last Graphs is very strong. Um, World's World Stone. World Stone is very strong. Uh, I cannot find World Stone. Oh, here it is. Um, but World Stone's Gemma Focus, probably for Reaver, right? So, with this build, you can see my protections are a lot lower. My heal is going to be, instead of 95, it's only 80. But my damage is going to be so much higher, right? Like that the detonate by itself is doing 740 plus the polynomicon auto is 1100 damage and you can you can do detonate all detonate and like just kill them 2500 damage you know it's very strong and like i said previously as well there's no cooldown to polynomicon there's no internal cooldown in Smite 2. So you can 1, auto, 2, auto, 3, auto. And you get Polynomicon every single time. Like my Polynomicon hit for 2,000. I mean, obviously it, it's not that much, right? My Poly is hitting for 260. Three different times in the same fight. <clears throat> so yeah, those are the two ways you can build Hades. Very, very good. Very, very good. Put face cam back on. Sip my latte. An ally has left the game. <clears throat> All right. Now it's Hakate time, baby. Oop, oop, oop. So Hakate is one of the, um, I mean, not one of the, it is the first new God in Smite 2 that is not in Smite 1. So let me explain her kit like I have with everyone else. How much gods does he still have to go through? I think I'm like halfway. It should be like another hour and a half, maybe. Ridiculous. But anyways, her basic attack is 100 strength, 20% intelligence, as always. And her passive is called Mythic Ritual. Basically, you can interact with the structure 
or with a teammate who has just recently killed someone to give them and yourself a buff. So in the beginning of the game, obviously you're going to interact with the tower instead. Um, I can't... I don't think I can do it while there's things fighting it. Okay, well, I, I guess it won't let me interact with it. Can I do it with my Titan? Can I interact with my Titan? I cannot. Okay, well, I don't know. I don't know how to show you. But basically, when you interact with the tower, it gives you... um. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, when you interact with towers... You get health regen and mana regen with a base plus an increase per level. When you interact with a player who has recently killed a god, both you and that player get a 300 second buff, which is a five minute buff, and you get extra strength and extra intelligence during that buff. So it's obviously way better to buff a player than it is to buff a, a structure. But if you got a camp of structure, some extra health regen and mana regen is not a bad thing. To just hang out under tower with you know um it is worth noting you can only have one thing active at a time so if you buff a tower and then you buff a player the tower buff is gone and your your player buff will be active if you buff a player and then buff a tower your player buff is gone and your tower buff will be active so you know pick and choose who you're buffing uh your one has two different uh things to it first off it Hakate is a, a mage. She does magic damage. And her one is based off intelligence. Only intelligence. And all it does is damage. Thank God it's easy to explain. The first the first type, when, when the buff is blue, or not the buff, when the ability is blue, you throw oh, it, boom, damage. And then it's got a little mark on it. You see the little mark? See the mark? That's important. That mark can be activated, <coughs> excuse me, for bonus damage. So if you, let me throw that somewhere. You mark them and then you auto attack. Boop. Every time you auto attack or every time you do damage, you see that little 18 number? That's, that you're just doing bonus damage to them every single time that, that they get hit by anything. Auto attacks, abilities, towers, minions, doesn't matter. It does extra damage to them. Um, actually, I think minions is a lie. Uh, and then when the first ability is purple, as you can see right here, it does the same thing as it does in the first stance, except now it's a mez. Which, uh, a mez is basically a stun, but if you do damage to them while they're mezzed, it, the stun is broken. Also, the, um... The purple form of this ability does not apply the mark. Only the blue form does. So blue form, you can see the mark. Right there, right above him. I'll wait for that to run out. And then all purple form. He's mezzed, but no mark. The two is this gigantic radius. You might be thinking, Sam, what is this in ultimate? No, it's not. It's just insane. So you get this little thing this little icon right here and every single ability that you cast your teammates cast or your enemies cast <clears throat> sorry my voice is cracking uh inside this this area will add one little notch to this passive circle right here so boop 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 and every single notch Destroy you add to this you, you can see the thing like, is like sucking up the ability, you know? Every notch you add, it goes up to 10. Um, Does more and more damage. It doesn't go up to 10. It goes up to 12. I'm sorry. It goes up to 12. It does more and more damage. And then when it's at 12, it, uh, it does 220% of its base damage and scaling. So not only does it go up Every single time you get a charge, it goes up by 10% damage and 10% scaling. Um, the scaling is massive. So, like, as you can see, I have no abilities. Or, I'm sorry, I have no items, and that did 345 damage. If I use it without any char charges, 
It only does 156. So, it does damn near double. And that's basically all that is. Use abilities inside this area, charge it up, unleash it to, to own. All magic flows to me. Um, the three, the three is weird, okay? So the three, first off, <clears throat> the three will give your two. Th this is my two. The big, like, area circle thing is my two. If you use your three while you're inside of your two, you gain three charges of your two rather than just the normal one. Which is very important. As you can three see, I can I can crank this up three at a time, and then detonate it. All magic flows to me. But anyways, what the three does is it is a shield that is increased based on, uh, or the sh the shield isn't actually increased. The damage is done by your shield is increased from intelligence, because you apply the shield to yourself or to allies, and it will do damage in an area around them. Whoever gets the shield applied to them, as you can see. So obviously I'm only putting it on myself, but if I switch teams here, I can apply the shield to the Ymir and the Ymir will get the, uh, the damage dealt in a radius around him. And then that damage dealt is, um, it is increased based on your intelligence. However, you might be noticing, Sam, that's a shield. That's OP, right? It's not actually a full shield. This shield only absorbs magical damage. The shield does not absorb any physical damage. So let me show you, for instance, if I walk over here, I have a 300 HP shield. This tower still just goes right through it. It took my health and not my shield. So don't get baited. I've been baited before, before I knew about this. You get a shield on you, you're like, oh, I'm chilling under this tower. I can take this hit. I can take this gold fury. I can take this fire giant. I can take this phoenix shot. You can't. You will still die. <laughs> and uh, Hakate players, especially J2B, likes to bait people with this and get them killed thinking that they can tank more than they can. They can't. It is only magical damage that is prevented by the shield. And then last but certainly not least is her alt. Her alt is basically just, uh, well, I say just, it's insane. It's not my fault if they keep tanking, I'm just doing my damage. All right, fair. But the alt is going to stun and displace enemy gods. And it's going to do a lot of damage. And first, I'll show you how it works. So as you can see here, I'm going to charge up. I'm going to be CC immune while I'm charging up. And then I'm going to leave a portal on the ground. Boom. And I can teleport between these two portals one time. So you can go one time. Everybody on your team gets to teleport one time. You can go back there or forward. Like if I use it there, I could teleport that way, but I can also teleport backwards. But you can only do it one time. That's the most important part. Now, the other important part is if I'm over here and I alt this Odin, the zoning gets sent to me. And then I could I could just switch places with the Odin by taking the teleporter. However, if the Odin is in my radius and I alt over there, the Odin gets sent over there. And by Odin, I mean Ymir. I don't know why I keep saying Odin. The Ymir gets sent over there. So... Uh, this is an insane ability to peel yourself off of anyone because let's say like this Ymir is trying to kill me. I just alt and I keep running, right? I've, I've covered an, an immense amount of distance, right? Or if like, let's say I have a teammate over there that's dying. I can alt them over there, save my teammate over there and, and like get a whole team fight on me. You know, it's very strong. So the normal combo you're going to do with her, by the way, is you're going to push your two down. You're going to alt in. You're going to hit them with your one and your two right when they spawn or your one and your three right when they spawn. And then you're going to hit them with the two afterwards. 
after you've casted all your other abilities. So you're gonna two, you're gonna ult, and then you're gonna one, three, two. And that's gonna be like the biggest kind of burst damage you can do as this character. Now there's really only one build to do with this character because she's a mid lane mage. Uh, you should not play her any other way, realistically. Um, and I mean, you could go divine. I'll probably go, probably go off shard here. So realistically, this is like the only build you're going to do. I right, three, one, two after I alt. I make sure my one is on mez. Yeah, that's fair. But you're going to place your two down. You're going to alt three mez and then two. And as you can see, the burst damage is pretty good. It's about 2,400 damage. Um, the only way you could make that higher is if you hit them with your one to mark them and then follow them through and then burst at them, which would obviously, that would do about 2,700 damage. I killed him at 2,500 health, but it would do about 2,700 damage. You could mark them and do a little bit more damage that way. If you use the the blue one rather than the mesm one, which is the purple one, but either way, that's basically just how you burst her. That's Hikate. pretty good, not bad at all. She's 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 damn good to be honest with you. Probably one of the best mages, or probably one of the best mids in the game right now. I think Neath is probably the best mid, but Hikate is up there. An ally has left the game. Boop, Jingwei. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Jingwei got changed just a bit. She didn't get a whole lot of changes. Actually, that's not true. She actually got a significant amount of changes. She probably got the most changes, actually. What am I talking about? From Smite 1 to Smite 2, Jingwei probably got the most changes. All right. So, four starters, 100% strength, 20% intelligence of the basic attack. The passive is the same thing she has in Smite 1. You just get to fly into the sky whenever you uh, leave your fountain, which I can't show you in practice, but you know what it, you know how it works. Um, and then you see this little bow with three notches under it. So what that bow is, is actually your two. I'm going to start with your two right here. So your two... Enhances your basic attacks, making them wider and give them a chance to crit. A max rank gets a 15% crit chance and you get three autos. Um, I can get, you can see here, I have three like eagles in this little, this little icon down here. Every time I shoot, one of my eagles flies. Boom, boom. And then I can, let me turn off reduce cooldown actually. I can use my two and then you see this little orb filling up. <clears throat> that orb is actually my two's cooldown. So I can shoot three times, use my two, shoot three times, use my two, shoot three times, use my two, shoot three times. And then this, this orb is going to fill up. And now, I, now I don't have any charges of my two, right? And then one orb fills up. I can use my two and I have some more, some more uses of it, you know? So the two is based off how many orbs you have filled up now. You get three autos every orb that fills up. Um, and you can tell the orb is filled when the, when it like glows a little, when it goes to the next orb. Yeah, so you see how this, this third orb isn't glowing, but the first two are? That's how you can tell that the orb is full. <clears throat> so that's her two. It changed. You now have like basically nine to 12 AOE crit enhanced extra damage dealing autos. It's pretty ridiculous. Um, her one, as you can see, has two circles on it now. So the first circle obviously is the knockup. It does damage, it knocks up and it does the tick damage if there's, they're sitting in it. Um, excuse me. The one when you are in the radius of the one, the, the big radius, not the little one, you, you no longer have to self-CC yourself 
to get the, the buff stim that Jingwei gets in, in Smite 1. Instead, if you just walk next to your your little uh, wing gust thing, you get the increased attack speed as if you were to self-CC. Um, that attack speed, it doesn't actually say how much attack speed you get. Uh, but I have 1.28 now. I have 1.68. So it's a 40% attack speed stim. 40% attack speed stim. It lasts for 6 seconds and the ability scales off strength. Uh, I've already shown the two. The one, or I'm sorry, the three is the same as in Smite 1. But now in Smite 1, when you use your three, it was... Let me turn on cooldowns, sorry. When you used your three, it was only in one direction. You couldn't move. In Smite 2, you actually have movement in your three. Like you can move while dashing to avoid things. So like... I, if I see someone ahead of me, I can dash and then move right in the middle of the air. Right? So you could juke someone out thinking that you're going to go straight and basically like full U-turning it, you know? So it's, it's pretty insane. That's the only change to the three that they added. Obviously, the three still gives you the bonus strength. Um, if you are knocked up, if you use your three wall knocked up, your three gives you strength anyways, but it gives you an additional strength bonus if you are knocked up. So like you can, I have 94 strength right now, as you can see, I use my three, I go up to 124. However, I go from 94 to 139, which is obviously 45 strength instead of 30. If you use it while you're knocked up from your one. Or if you're knocked up from like Susana Walt or anything like that, doesn't matter what knocks you up. If you are knocked up and you dash out of it, you get the additional strength. And then the alt, which is the coolest change to Jingwei in my, in my opinion, is it's the same alt in Smite 1. You launch yourself forward in this little area like this. However, if you don't click anything, you do a second drive by and double up on the damage it deals. So you can still do like, if you're trying to get away from someone really quick, you could still alt and then like click and land over here if you wanted to and like keep running. But if you want to fight and like, let's say, let's say you alted someone and they run like juke back this way, you can alt and then just hang out do another sweep of damage and then land back to where you were before you ulted. And that obviously scales off strength as well. And then her build is going to be the same as the other uh, crit builds that I've shown you guys so far today. It's going to be like XE and then a bunch of crit chance. Um, with um... <laughs> with the extra like addition to being able to use your two nine times maybe 12 times depending on what cooldown you have uh she has 100 percent crit chance with this build it's 30 percent plus 40 percent which is 70 plus 15 okay so it's an 85 percent crit chance i guess still insane though Still insane though. I actually have not not crit while my two was active. Wait. Okay, there we go. There we go. I finally I finally got a crit. I finally got a non-crit during my uh, my two. But yeah, this is basically just the build you're going to go on her. Your starter item is is probably going to be Death's Toll or Leather Cal. They're both very good. I would probably personally go Leather Cal, but... Yeah, critting for 464 on a tank is pretty damn good. 
Not to mention you can like bust buff your strength up and then crit for 500. Yeah, 528. Not bad. King Wei is very, very, very good. Very, very, very good. Let's go next. That's the only build, by the way, you should be doing engine. You shouldn't really do like... You shouldn't really do like a Kins build or anything An like that. Ally has left the game. Mm -hmm. Am I dying? I was sipping my latte and, and humming Elmo's world. All right, let's set this up again. <coughs> All right. Auto attacks, 100% strength, 20% intelligence, as always. Uh, the passive is the same as my one. You gain extra intelligence based on how much mana you have. Um, Why am I dead? Why, why are we missing health? The one is the same as my one. It does damage based on how much intelligence you have, and it slows the enemy. The two is a little bit different than smite one because the two does do like it it speeds you up and um it makes you slow immune however if you use your two while you are in your three it's a new effect and instead your two becomes a dash dealing damage and slowing enemies that it hits Damage, obviously, based on intelligence. I missed. There we go. So you can either... You can either use your two as just a movement speed increase, like this, or you can use your two as a literal dash that deals damage and use yourself as a ballistic missile going into the fight. You can tell which one I'm a fan of. Because I like missiles. <laughs> I just like dashing, man. It's sick. But yeah, you can do more burst damage uh, as Cuckoo by using your, your two inside of your three. Your three is the exact same as it was before. Scales of intelligence. Does tick damage. You know, nothing new there. Nothing new there. Um, and then your alt again is the exact same as my one. Um, excuse me. Where basically it's just a big ass uh dragon that comes out and does damage. Knocks up, does damage. Same exact thing. <clears throat> Cuckoo basically did not get changed. Except for the fact that if you are inside your whirlwind with your two, you can dash. Does it work if you exit the three and then dash? No. However, sometimes there's a bug where if you are inside your tornado, when your tornado goes away, the next time you press two, it will be a dash. So like, if I leave my dash, or if I leave my tornado, I can do my my normal slipstream. But if I sit inside my tornado for the full duration of it, sometimes, like it didn't it didn't happen that time, but sometimes it'll like it'll let your two still work afterwards. But that's just a bug. And then to build him, you're going to build him just like you're building every other mage, basically. Last Grass, World Stone, uh, Soul Reaver, and Polynomicon. And your burst damage is going to be obviously very strong. Um, I think Cuckoo is one of the highest damage dealing gods in the game right now. Like, in terms of mid damage. Like, my dash... Just did 800 damage almost. My one? Down. I, I don't know how much. How much did my one do? Down. 
My one did 800 damage. Why World Stone? Because World Stone increases or lowers your ultimate cooldown by an extra 20%. So, like, my alt cooldown. First off, that did almost 2,000 damage to a tank. But uh, my alt cooldown is only 66 seconds. And, but, but because I have World Stone. Because I have World Stone, even though my cooldown says it's 66.67 seconds, it's only a 53 second cooldown. Because it takes 20% off of the cooldown after your cooldown reduction is applied. So World Stone is really, really, really strong. But yeah, I mean, the, the basic... The basic combo you're going to do with Kukulkin, I mean, it's just the, it's the one auto Whirlwind. And then obviously an auto again, if you can fit that in there. I thought it would adjust the number, so I always thought that's terrible. Nah, man. It's very good. Very, very good. Alright, there's Cuckoo. Not bad. Cuckoo did not get a lot of changes between Smite 1 and Smite 2. However, um, he got more changes than Thanatos. An ally has left the game. Oh, we got Loki, my boy. Now, Loki in Smite 2 is actually so good. He does so much damage, it's ridiculous. Do, 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 do. All right. Loki only scales off of strength, by the way. He has no intelligence scaling at all, so there is one way to build Loki and one way only. Um, Obviously, his auto attacks are 100% strength, 20% intelligence. His passive is an extra 15% damage from behind the target, as you can see here. Punch him in the face, 51. Punch him in the back. Hold on. I got to re my auto attack reset. 59. So from 51 to 59, eight extra damage. It's a 15% increase. Um, The one, the two, the three, and the alt are technically speaking all the same. Your two does damage and it makes their screen all funky. Your one is a stealth that does tick damage. Um, your three does a bunch of different swipe attacks and then one big stab at the end. 29, 29, 29, and then 99 at the end. And your alt is a teleport, cripple, and then a stun afterwards. Like, boop, boop. So it does damage, it cripples them, and then it stuns them. So his entire kit is exactly the same. The reason why he's so good in Smite 2 is because proc items are better in Smite 2 than they were in Smite 1. So the way that I've been building Mr. Loki is like this. Technically, I have been going double stacking. I've been going Devos plus Transcendence. But because I'm not going to double stack, I'm just going to do it the normal way. Um, I'm going to go with Teko. Do do. Um, Hydras, and then actually I go Soul Reaver. So I have Heartseeker, I have Crusher, and I have Soul Reaver. So look how much damage my two does. Nine hundred and forty-three damage from my two. My two, the thing that really doesn't do much damage. My one, up, 1100. Um, and then, you know, the three, obviously another 1100 and the alt, a little lackluster, only 954, you know? 
But you put all that together, you're bursting like 4,000 damage in Loki's kit. Um, and I don't even have trans stacked. It's actually insane. The one thing I will say that did change about Loki's kit, though, is that... Um, hold on. Actually, give me a second. Turn off reduced cooldowns. Your one gets your cooldown reset when you get a kill. So you see how my cooldown is 11 seconds? I get a kill, I can stealth immediately. Right? And then I get a kill, I can stealth immediately. And I get a kill... I can stealth immediately. And I get a kill. I can stealth immediately. I can stealth immediately. That's how it works. You have slayed an enemy. That is how it works. That is the only change that they did uh between Loki's kit and Smite 1 and Smite 2. Um also Loki's 2, the blind is a bit better in Smite 2 than it is in Smite 1. It's more of like an actual blind, like it's an actual effect on your screen. But, um, but yeah, but as you can see, this build is absurd. I did 1200 with the one. I did 1026 with the two. Oh, I, I messed it up because I accidentally reset it. I did 12.50 with the three. Like... I got your back. <laughs> and the alt does 1,025. And that's without Hydra's autoing in between, by the way. If I had one auto attack, like, dude. It's insane. It is insane the damage that Loki can do. Like, look at this. Just dead. Just dead. Like, this is my normal combo that I do. I'll just do this. And then I'll walk away. 2200 damage. It's, it's crazy. Dude, it's so dumb. Loki does so much damage. Uh, this is pretty much the only build you should be doing on Loki, by the way. Uh, obviously, you should go Hydra's. Like, this is probably the order you should build them in. To be honest. This is actually a fine order. But yeah, there's Loki. Probably one of the best junglers uh, right now. Susano's obviously the, the actual best jungler, but I think... Loki's probably second best. You can carry a game with Loki. I've had games on Loki where I've gotten over 35 kills. Is your one reset on any kill or is it only if you get a kill with the one? It's any kill. Any kill. All right, and now we have Mordred. Mordred is the second brand new god to Smite 2. He is not in Smite 1. I did not mean to spawn that god. Or that, that bot. I'm, I apologize. But whatever. It doesn't matter. Now, Mordred is a little bit complicated. Because he is the only god in the game whose auto attack scaling is not 100 strength and 20 magical. Or 100 strength and 20 in, uh, intelligence. Um, Instead, <laughs> he has two different weapons. He has the morning weapon. And he's got the clarent weapon. So in my right hand is the morning weapon, which is my first attack and my fourth attack in my auto attack chain. The left hand is the clarent weapon, which is the second and third auto attack in my auto attack chain. So I go right hand, left hand, left hand, right hand. That is how his auto attack chain works. His left hand scales more off intelligence. 60% uh, strength and 100% intelligence. And his right hand is 100% strength, 20 intelligence. So it is a bit different. 
Um, you can build him a lot of different ways. Um, but yeah, let's just get into his passive. So his passive ha is attached to his ultimate, like King Arthur. Because if you don't know who Mordred is, Mordred is basically... Uh, he died to King Arthur's hand. Or he was he lost in combat. I don't know if he technically died. Uh, but he lost in combat to King Arthur. He's an Arthurian god. And he's got kind of the same alts as King Arthur. Uh, I gotta charge it up real quick by doing some damage. Let me just... Okay, so you see how I have. Oh, uh, hold on. Actually, let me just let me just get all the way. Okay, so I have my passive here is completely glowing, and I've hit that second notch, that that top notch right there. That top notch means that my ultimate. Uh, I'm gonna go backwards, by the way. I'm gonna go four, three, two, one in terms of abilities, but my ultimate is now at its all like big form. You know how King Arthur has the the little stabby form and then he's got the big like I'm a cut you up type form. Uh Mordred has kind of the same thing. So in his big ultimate form, it scales off strength and intelligence. Um he does this. Did 600 damage. It dashes, you go anime mode. You uh, slam into an enemy god, and you pick them up. Now, what I will say is... This god... Hold on. Okay, hold on. Okay, uh, so this ultimate can pick up multiple people. Now you might be thinking, wow, that's insane. It is insane, first off. I just picked up four people with my ult. You can pick up as many as you can get, by the way. I Like, obviously five is the maximum because that's as many people that are on the map. But... You might be thinking, wow, Sam, how could that get any better? Well, let me show you. Let me show you how it could get better. Not only can you pick up multiple people, um, but you turn into a hunter and you go through walls. You can run through anything in the map and then hit and pick up everyone. So, yeah. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. Um, you can see the alt duration lasts a long time. You cannot get stuck in a wall with this alt because if you are in a wall at the time that your alt times out, it will just let you keep going until you uh until you're out of that wall. So let me show you here. You see how my alt timer timed out? It still lets me go until I get out of the wall. So it's fine. Can you beads his ult? You can beads his ult. If you get hit with it, you cannot. The second that his ult hits you, you are going to be taken up into the air and get all that damage done to you. However, if you ult before he makes contact with you, you can beads it. Um, And then you have his other ult. His little ult. Which, as you can see, just became available when you get this first little notch. Um, and this one is also very, very good. This one scales strictly off intelligence. Um, the damage it deals is off of strength, but the majority of it is intelligence. So what it does is it hits someone in front of you, rooting them, giving you a health shield and healing uh, based on your intelligence. So that's what it is. You can see that it gave me some, gave me a shield and some, uh, some healing back. You can watch one more time. It's going to hit him, do some damage, and then it's going to siphon health to me while giving me a shield. So 
so that's what is that's what his tier one alt does they're both very good i think his tier one alt is actually a little bit better than his tier two alt to be honest but his tier two alt is sick i love it um if two mortars alt each other who wins technically neither because they're both cc immune technically it's just depression All right, so now we'll do the three. So the three, as you can see, has two different lines to it. It's got that inner line, that very small inner line, and then it's got the big outer line. So if you hit the big outer line, it just does a little bit of damage and slows. That's all it does. Does a little bit of damage and slows. 30%, big slow. <clears throat> if you hit the middle line, it does damage and slows and it applies a bleed. Now, I obviously can't make the Odin bots move and follow me, but it applies the same kind of effect that um, Charon's one does in Smite one. So basically, if you hit them with this little thing and they move, then they're going to take tick damage every time they move. Every step they take, they're going to take tick damage. And it's a significant amount of sick damage, too. It's not a small amount. Uh, the two is something pretty... It's pretty straightforward. You use your two. It's an attack speed stim. It does damage in an area around you. It gives you attack speed for four seconds. It gives you 40% attack speed, 20% movement speed, eight protections, and reduces eight protections um, from anyone you hit. So, like... I'll gain eight protections and he'll lose eight protections when I hit him. If I hit all these guys, they all lose eight protections and I still gain eight protection. Same thing. Um, The buff, the physical protection buff and debuff stacks up to four times is what it says right there. So you can get, um, what is that? 32 protections but you can only ever take away eight because obviously you can't hit the same person four times in a row you know but you can get up to 32 protections from you too and it does work on minions i'm pretty sure so yeah damage skills off strength and intelligence so either way you build him very good now, his one is the final ability that Mordred has, and it's actually two abilities in one. So you can see that it's purple right here, and that is because I have the morning activated in my next auto in my auto attack chain. So like I said earlier, the morning weapon, which is my right hand, is going to attack first and fourth. My clarent weapon is going to attack second and third of my auto attack chain. So I'll go right hand, left hand, left hand, right hand. That is my auto attack chain. Okay. Now, when you are using your morning for your next auto attack, AKA before your first auto attack or before your fourth auto attack in this auto attack chain, and you use your one, you're going to be doing bonus damage uh, based on how much protection you have. So right here. You see that extra 30 right there? It does 108 on the first swing, 118 on the second swing, and then an additional 30 up top for a total of 256. If I auto attack first, then my, my first ability turns orange because my next auto attack is not going to be with Clarent. Or I'm sorry, it's not going to be with Morning. It's going to be with Clarent. And that does less damage because you don't get the bonus damage. The, you don't get the extra 30 damage that morning would give you, but instead you get 30 healing. As you can see there, oh, I got 61, but you get healing instead. So based on what attack chain you're using or what weapon your next auto attack is going to be with, you get an additional effect on your one. It's either healing or it's bonus damage. If it's purple right here when you use it, it's bonus damage. If it's orange, it's bonus healing. And the, both of those scale off your protections. 45% of your protections for healing, 40% of your protections for extra damage. Um, and then 
the way there's a couple ways to build him. I've been playing him uh kind of like Loki as well. I've been playing him kind of like this in the jungle. Uh where's my last item? I'll just go Teko. But I've been playing him like this with full damage. Which obviously does a lot of damage. And as you can see from the alt. It does 1300 damage. Um, So it's very good. Let's heal these guys up. Uh, by the way, your tier one alt, this like the one where you just stab forward, um, it, uh, it's AOE. So you can hit multiple people with it and you do heal per person. I'm pretty sure. Okay. You do not heal per person. I like. But maybe you should. Death follows close. Why trans over devos? Because I'm not double stacking. You can pro like trans plus devos is probably still gonna work as a double stack, but I'm not gonna do any double stacking builds in this video. And I'd rather have trans over devos. Um, but anyways. That is one way to build Mordred if you're gonna go jungle with him, which I, I personally like him more in the jungle. Um, but if you're going to go solo lane with him, I actually would go Devos. Um, I would go Berserkers and Mystical Male. I would probably go Stone of... Uh, yeah, I'd probably go Stone of Binding. And then I'd probably just go like... Void Shield Shifters, right? And then you're going to be really tanky, obviously. Um, I have a lot of physical protections and no magical protections. The reason I don't build a lot of magical protections right now in Spike 2 is because I feel like um, most gods right now are building strength. Or most gods right now are dealing like physical damage. Like all the meta ones. So this is just how I'm building right now. Obviously, you can switch out, like, the shifters for, like, a Genji's or something. You could even switch out, like, Mystical Mail for, um, like, a Shogun's, too. To fix out the, the protections a little bit more in your favor. But either way, there's stats I'm working with. And I'm still going to do a lot of damage, as you can see here. Like, I'm still doing, what, like, 700 damage each? And then if you ult them... My ult did an additional 700 damage each. So. Full tank, I can still ult for like 700. And then. There is one more build you can do. With Mordred. <clears throat> which is actually an intelligence based build. Just like all the other ones. Um, and the reason you can do that is because your ultimate scales off of intelligence, your three scales off of intelligence, and your two can scale off intelligence. So going intelligence focused, look how much damage your tier one alt does. Almost 1200. Deso over a Necronomicon. Well, I don't actually really buy Necronomicon because it lowers your protection so much it's almost never worth it. It's kind of a meme item. Um, but then the big alt, look how much damage this does. 1,400 each. So intelligence, intelligence Mordred does work. And on top of that, because your auto attack chain as Clarent is 100% scaling off your intelligence. Check out your auto attacks. 
It's 400 each. Your second and third auto attack is going to use your left hand, which is Clarent, which is going to scale off of your intelligence. So your first and fourth auto attack are going to kind of suck because you have no strength, right? Only 134. But your second and third auto attack are going to do 400 each. Not to mention that the, the tick damage, the bleed on the three, obviously I can't get the bleed to show. Um... Because they're, they're, uh, what's it called? But that scales off strength, which the bleed is really hard to hit, right? So like if you're building like jungle Mordred, like I did, like I just showed you before, and you miss the, the bleed damage and you only hit like the side here, you're like, oh man, what a bummer. You know, that only did like 200 damage, but if you're intelligence, you don't even care about the bleed because the initial damage is based off intelligence. So that initial damage is doing 600. So you don't even care about the bleed. Which is like intelligence is an easier way to play Mordred. Um, also, your two does like, you know, a decent amount of damage as intelligence. But yeah, the auto attack is crazy. Like 152 and then 490 each. Like, come on. I'm doing damn near a thousand damage with two auto attacks. But yeah, those are the few ways that you can build Mordred. Very, very fun. My he's my personal favorite god in Smite 2 right now. <clears throat> yeah, Polly would work. You could get Polly. An ally has left the game. Oh, I already did Neath. I already showed Neath. Why Worldstone? Did I buy Worldstone? I didn't mean to. I am leveling up. An ally has All right, I've already done Neath, so we're onto the last row, baby. Odin. All right. So Odin. <clears throat> uh, realistically, I'm not gonna lie to you. Nothing changed. He is the exact same as he is in Smite One. Uh, the only difference is that his three instead of um instead of charging three times to get the stun it only charges twice and you can stun but i think that's in i think that's in smite one right now anyways so it stuns after only the the second charge but for those of you who are new to smite 2 i'm gonna do the same thing i've been doing with every god i'm gonna go over all of his abilities 100 percent scaling on strength and 20 percent intelligence on his auto attacks his passive is that when he gets a kill, <clears throat> he gets a buff that gives him move speed, strength, and intelligence, a max buff stack of two. Um, And basically, when you are maxed out on your buffs, every time you get a kill, you will gain 8% movement speed, 20% strength, 20% intelligence for 10 seconds. Not bad. His one scales strictly off of strength, and all it does very simply is... Jump and do damage. All it does. That's the whole thing. Scales only off strength. Jumps and does damage. His two. Uh, very, very simple. It scales off strength and intelligence. Um, and it's a shield. And if that shield is at full duration. Or not full duration, sorry. At full like capacity when it explodes then it does additional damage if it's not at full capacity when it explodes it still does a decent amount of damage um <clears throat> and then if you want to you can detonate your your shield by jumping so like you can jump like normal or you can use your two and then jump 
And right when you land, your shield will blow up, dealing additional damage. So, like, my two by itself does 219. My one by itself does 177. My 2-1 combo does 219 plus 177. It's the exact same damage. It's just a bit faster. Like, it's a more bursty kind of combo. Um, The three gives you two different things. If you fully charge it up, like, you let it pulse twice. You can run around forever. You don't have to, like, let it go. But the next time you click, obviously, it'll throw it. Um, You throw your, your spear out. You get this little circle that does damage around you, and then you throw your spear out. The circle does damage twice, a total of two times when you fully charge it. Uh, and then the spear does damage whenever you throw it at someone. When you are um, pulsing the damage, that damage is based off intelligence. When you are throwing the spear, that spear damage is based off strength. You're never going to go intelligence, Odin, by the way. Like, I, I'm just going to call it how it is. You're really never going to go Intelligence Odin. You're only going to go Strength Odin. But that's pretty much like, that's the scaling. There's the first pulse, if you throw the spear after this first pulse, pulse right here, you get a buff. You see it increases attack speed. It's an AOE buff. It applies to everybody in the little radius around you. You get, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I believe it is a, yeah, you get a 40% attack speed buff. If you refire the spear early then you actually get a 40% reduced cooldown on this ability. So as you can see, let me let me show you here. Reduce cooldowns off. The cooldown of this ability is 12 seconds, but if I throw it with the attack speed, it's only a 7 second cooldown. Whereas if I fully charge it and then throw it, it's still going to be a 12 second cooldown. As you can see there. So that is worth noting that you get 40% off of your cooldown by launching a little bit early and you get 40% attack speed. So, you know, you got to pick your poison whether you want the attack speed buff for, the, for you and your allies and a lower cooldown or if you want to get the stun by fully charging it. Because that, that spear only stuns if you fully charge. If you launch it at tier one, it, it just does damage. It doesn't, full, it doesn't stun. So you got to pick between attack speed for you and your allies and a lower cooldown or a stun on someone. Most people pick the stun most of the time, but you know, it's up to you. And last but not least is your ultimate. You summon a big cage. Every wall of the cage has five health, which um, you can only damage the wall of the cage by auto attacking it. So the enemy team would need to auto attack the wall. The same, the same side of the wall five times. Like if you hit this wall and you hit this wall, they're both BF4. They have different health bars per section. Um, while they're inside the cage, they are, um, a hundred percent reduced healing. They cannot heal at all. And they have 25% reduced strength and 25% reduced intelligence. So they deal less damage and they cannot heal. Um, if they leave the area, which I can't show you, unfortunately, but if they leave the area... Like, let's say they jump out of your ultimate. Then a spear will shoot out of your ultimate into the enemy based off your strength. As you can see, enemies who leave the area take 359 damage, 110% of your strength, and are slowed unless exiting through a segment of the ring that was destroyed by basic attacks. So if they jump out of the alt, rather than, like, breaking through it, they get a butt-ass ton of damage hit by them, and they get a 25% slow for 5 seconds. Unfortunately, I can't show you that, but, um, like that, that's basically, that's basically it. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Hold on. I'm getting the builds right now. So there's, there's two builds, sorry. There's two builds for Odin. Um, the person that I've been playing with a lot has, has mainly played Odin as a support. And that support is, it's the same build that he's always been going. It's, it's Thieves and this and this. Stone of Binding is really good. And then you're going to go like Spirit Robe. And you can go like Ruinous or something. 
So, <clears throat> yeah, this is like the general support build. I'll show you my protections here. And obviously those those protections are a little low because they don't have Thebes stacked. It's obviously going to be way bigger. But that's the general, like, support build for Odin. But if you're going to play him in the solo lane... I'd say generally you want to go either Transcendence or Devos. Because stacking it is just, like, very, very good in general. I'd probably go Devos, honestly, on him. And then... Uh, you'd go like, you know, Eye of the Storm is very good. I think Phoenix Feather is, is a very, very, very good item, but it's not something that you build every game. That's like a situational build. And I will make another separate video at some point going over all the items. But right now I'm just giving you general, uh, God knowledge and builds that you can do with those gods. Um, obviously if you want to switch up the builds, you can, right? Like you have free will you can do whatever you want but uh i'm just giving you like very general builds that i know through experience have worked for me and they do very good you know but yeah so like a, a very generic um build you can do with him is like you can go uh, like like this probably you could even just i mean you could just go void zone to be honest but i'll probably go shifters so it, again, uh, it's a lot more physical protection than it is magical protection, but it's a lot more strength as well. It's 195 strength in your kit. So you're going to be doing a bit more damage with everything, you know, like I just bursted 1400. So this is kind of the solo Odin. Odin is very, very strong right now. Um, obviously I'm opting into life seal rather than damage. If you want more damage. You could very simply just go into um, Transcendence here instead. But but yeah. It's up to you. Both those builds are very good. <clears throat> Next! An ally has left the game. Soul. Okay, there is two soul builds. I'm stuck. There we go. So first off, let's do what we've been doing. Oh no, skins did not transfer to Smite 2. Well, some of them did, not all of them. Um. Okay, so... <clears throat> Uh, 100% strength, 20% intelligence. Uh, Soul is a magical damage character. Um, Yeah, I am recording it. Her passive is the same thing as it was in Smite 1. Basically, the more heat you have, the more damage you deal with your auto attack. So, you can see the more heat I have, the more damage my auto attacks are going to deal. And then when my heat is all the way maxed out, you're going to see a spike in my auto attack damage. So there you go. So I went from at zero heat, 60 damage, 99% heat, 65, 100% heat, 75. Um, and that is very important because that is a multiplier on soul's basic attacks on her, her passive. So just keep that in mind for later. Her one is the exact same thing as it was in smite, um, uh, in smite one. It scales off intelligence. It's a heal. It does this. It gives you a lot of heat. It does damage in this little area around you. As well as it heals you. Um, the more heat you have, the bigger this radius gets. And it gets all the way up to three times its original size. As you can see, now that I have maximum heat right now, it is a very large circle. Um, and if I let my heat go all the way down, you will see... If I just hold this out, you'll see a shrink. Like me in an ice cold pool. Um, if you... If... <laughs> sorry. Anyways. 
That's the one. That's all the one does. It's a big circle. It heals you. It does damage. It gets bigger. The two, the exact same thing in Smite 1, is it is like gives you this auto attack that you get to throw out. And when you throw it out at max range, or if it hits something, it detonates and does the two ticks of damage in like a kind of like boom, boom kind of area. You know what I mean? That scales off of mainly your strength, but it does scale off of your, or I'm sorry, mainly your intelligence, but it does scale off your strength. And we'll also slow them by 35%, which is pretty dang good. The three is going to be a movement speed increase. You're also slow immune when you use your three. And you also leave behind a trail that does damage and detonates. So as you see, when I use my three, you see this little timer go down. When that timer goes down, you see I just turn into like a little ball of fire. I am completely damage immune. I cannot be targeted. I cannot be damaged. During the cast of the three, you see that I leave behind a fire trail. When I inevitably turn into my little ball of fire, the trail of fire that I left while moving is going to detonate doing damage. And that damage is based off my intelligence. Um, you also gain movement speed while you're in your three. It's 30%. So as you can see here, you're going to run past him. It's going to do damage. And then it's going to detonate for 188. The detonate is a lot stronger in Smite 2 than it is in Smite 1. The tick damage is the same, but then the detonates are very good. So yeah. And then I'll show you that I am completely untargetable here. I'll go into tower. Damage immune. Damage immune. Towers are not supposed to target you. I don't know why they do, but... Yeah, you can see that I'm, I'm fully damage immune there. All right. There you go. So that's the three. And then the ultimate is called the supernova. Basically, you launch eight, um, like, beams of fire down. Basically, beams from the sun down. Uh, very quickly and it does damage the first time the enemy is hit they're knocked up every subsequent damage after that first initial knock up is a lot less damage and it doesn't knock up so you can see here the first hit's going to do a lot of damage and knock up all future hits are not going to do a lot of damage so you can see that that first hit did 127 and then knocked up every hit after that did 57 um this damage scales off your intelligence the subsequent damage after the first hit is only 30% of the uh, original hit. You're completely CC immune while using this ability. And you can also aim it however you want. So those eight auto attacks, or those eight, they're not auto attacks. The eight, like, bursts that you get, they come out very, very quick. And you can aim them however. And then for soul, there's two builds. There's the very, very simple crit chance auto build then the reason that this build is so good on soul which i talked about earlier and i said to remember is because her passive gives her attack speed and a auto attack damage multiplier so i have 2.32 attack speed i have a very high attack speed and I'm critting for almost 500 on a tank. You know? 470 on a tank. Okay, I just finished. My devos just got fully stacked. And I'm now critting for 515. Even my non-crits are almost 300 damage. So this is one way to build her. This is the way that I would say, like... Like 75% of the people that play soul are building her this way. Maybe even up to like 80 to 85% of people. It's very, very strong. The other way you can build her is actually intelligence focused, which is obviously going to be the same build that we've pretty much been doing this whole time. Um, where is... Go Polynomicon. From a focus. And this build, obviously you do a lot less damage with your auto attacks. Right? But your two, let me heal this guy before I kill him, does a crap ton. As you can see, the two did a thousand. The alt does even more. 
Yota's 1450. Even your three does a ton. The three does almost 1400. And then let alone. Hold on, let me let me stack up my uh my passive. And then look how much the one does. So the intelligent soul definitely works out. Like not to mention, like, I'm doing all this damage. And I have Polynomicon I'm not even using, you know? So, like, if you combo, you're like... You put that down, and then two, and then alt. They just get obliterated. Like, I overkilled him by a thousand damage. Right? With just pressing my one and two as Intelligent Soul, I'm doing, like, two thousand damage on him. And then if you add in, like, a Poly Auto before I throw the two... Like, let's put the one, throw in a poly auto. I'm just doing, like, so much damage. Crazy. Very, very good. Both of those builds are amazing on soul. Next! An ally yeah, not to mention that's without a starter item as well. Yeah. Oh, we got Susano. Susano is probably the best god in the game right now. I think... I think the, the best god in the game either goes to Jingwei or Susano. I personally would say Susano, though, because he's a, he's a bit OP. More than Bacchus? Yeah, probably. Uh, and let me explain why. So... He obviously has the same auto attack scaling as everyone else. 100% strength, 20% intelligence. His passive is different though. After using an ability, your next basic attack will add a Storm's Edge debuff. So if you don't use any ability, you don't add any kind of debuff. You see the six little notches under them? Nothing gets out of them. If you use an ability and then auto attack, at the first one and two stacks... Your enemy reduces 10% of their strength. At the third and fourth auto attack stacks, they lose 15% of their... They, they, they get slowed by 15%. At the five and six stack mark, they take an additional 10% damage. Buff lasts for three seconds. Each storm cat can trigger ability effects. Debuff lasts three seconds. So to show you how OP that is, you can do this. And then, um, every time you hit them with an ability, they just take Omega damage. So they get lower damage, they take more damage, and they are slowed. Just because you're, you're using your normal abilities. That's Susana's new passive. It's OP. It's very, very good. I love it. They better not nerf it. Um, <clears throat> Susano's one... By the way, Susano only scales off of strength. You're never going to build him any way other than strength. That's it. Um, and it's the exact same as in Smite 1. The first use of your 1 is just a little cone in front of you. Second use of your 1 is a big 360 cone. And the third use of your 1 is a long dash. Um, you have about 2 to 3 seconds in between the different... Um, the different uses of the ability in order to recast your one in order to use them. And it's very easy in Smite to, to auto cancel with your one because all you have to do is hold your auto attack button down and then press one and you will auto attack directly after. Press two, you will auto attack directly after. Press three, you will auto attack directly after. You do not have to cancel or press any special buttons. I will show you on the camera here. I'll press no special buttons. I will literally just press my mouse one button. And I will auto cancel with my one perfectly. That's all you have to do. Very simple, very easy. Um, and that's all that does. It just does some damage and you can hold your one by auto canceling or in order to auto cancel, it scales off strength. Your two, it's the same thing as my one again, but if you're new to my one, 
then there is two different things that your two does. If he is on the outer edge there, then all it does is it does some damage. 132, a little bit of damage. You see how there's two different cones. There's there's the big cone that has that big like swirly effect. And then there's the outer cone right here. Um, this outer cone on the sides, that only does a little bit of damage. That damage scales up through strength. The inner cone um, scales up through strength, but it pulls the enemy. So even if they're on the very edge, it'll pull them. It'll pull them to you. You can increase the distance that they're pulled by walking backwards while pulling. So if you stand still and pull, it goes there. But if you stand, if you're walking backwards and pull, then you can kind of extend the range a little bit. Okay, I'm I'm fucking it up, but you're gonna stand, extend the range a little bit, and you can pull them a little bit further. It's it's definitely like a, a skill that you have to practice to get down, but walking backwards while pulling someone, it can be the difference between a kill or not getting a kill. And then your three, your three is going to be jet stream. It's basically just, you throw out a tornado. That tornado sits there for a while, does some damage. Um, if you attach the three to something, then it will follow that thing. It'll, it'll completely follow it. Let me get a minion wave to spawn over here. And so I can show that. Hopefully minion spawn. Yeah, there we go. So if you attach the three to a minion, you can see that the it will it will stay attached to that minion in specific or whatever you hit with the three, and it will follow that thing for the duration of the three. If you teleport to your three, which you can, uh, it actually lowers the cooldown of it. So let me uh, turn off infinite cooldowns. You can see the cooldown right now is 13 seconds. And if I teleport to it, it is only 11 seconds. So it does lower the cooldown quite a bit. Um, this, I, this ability scales off of strength. Has a little bit of base damage. It's not going to do a whole bunch of damage. It's a very low damaging ability. It's mainly just how you travel around. You just throw it and then you teleport to it. And uh, that's pretty much it. I said cooldown. You can throw it anywhere you want. It doesn't have to be attached to anyone. You can just throw it and then teleport to it wherever you want. <clears throat> but yeah. And then last but not least is the ultimate. The ultimate is slightly different than it is in Smite 1. In Smite 1, all the ultimate does is it lands on the ground. It gets a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it shoots out and it knocks up anyone that hits. In Smite 2... um. The alt actually does damage before it even shoots out. So you should put your alt on someone. It does damage to them, like tick damage, but then shoots out after it's fully charged. However, you can actually shoot this out immediately and it will always knock up. 100% of the time it will knock up. Uh, you should charge your ultimate because charging your ultimate does increase the damage. Your ultimate starts at 50% damage, scaling all the way up to 100%. So as you can see here, if I just like instant launch it, it's 162 damage. But if I fully charge it, it's 392 damage. So it, it doubles up basically. So it, it basically doubles the damage just by charging it. It's super worth charging up. Um, That's all that does. The combo... With Susano, it looks something similar to either the like two three one. It's it it's basically like this. You're gonna pull them in, and then you're gonna attach your three to them, and then you're gonna teleport to the three. Your three is a very very fast auto attack cancel. So what an auto attack cancel is? It's it's canceling the animation of your auto attack in order to attack faster. So like my auto, normal auto attack combo is like boom boom. Boom. But if I use my three to auto cancel, it's as fast as this. Boom, boom. Very fast. So your combo is going to be something similar to pulling them in, auto attacking, using your three to auto cancel, and then using your one to auto cancel. So it's going to be like two, 
three one. That's gonna be like your typical burst kind of combo. Obviously, throw in your alt whenever you feel like it. Um, the alt, by the way, in Smite Two goes way further distance than it does in Smite One, which is definitely worth noting. Like this, this thing flies. Look how far it goes. So that is worth noting. You could also just simply like one combo and then three. So you can dash to them and then teleport back to the three to keep the burst combo going. Like one, two, three, one, three, and then two. So you can just kind of keep that burst combo going and stay stick to them a little bit. You can do that combo as well, but it's really just whatever you feel like doing. And then the build for Susano, very simple. Um, It's the same as like all the other kind of excuse me, all the other kind of um, proc item builds I've been doing, Soul Reaver, Crusher, Heartseeker, Hydras, and Tekokage. All right, I would have killed him, which is why I healed him. But you can see like how much damage this thing does. My ult did 1100 to this guy. My one burst did... 1500 my three with only two auto cancels does 1360 my two with an auto cancel does 900 so you can you can imagine like the burst combo that susano does is like 3500 but he does it so quick you can't really react to it you know like that was 2500 damage instantly it's insane Like, just my 2-1 combo does 1,800. You could, like, pull. And then, like, throw the 3. And they just die. Crazy. Susano's probably my second favorite god. Mordred and then Susano. They're probably my, like, my lineup of gods right now. Let's go next. An ally has left the game. Thanatos. I'll be honest with you. I don't really think that Thanatos... Uh, I don't really think that Thanatos needs a portion in this video, but I will give it just because <clears throat> if you are new to Smite 2 and you haven't played any Smite 1, then you're going to want to know about Thanatos, right? Uh, auto attack obviously is 100% scaling on the strength, 20% scaling on intelligence. Um, he has an auto attack chain just like everyone does. His passive is whenever you get a god kill, you gain 15% of their maximum health as a heal. When you get an NPC kill, like a minion or, you know, gold fury, fire giant, whatever the fuck, um, you gain 7% of their maximum health as a heal. You also gain five seconds off of all of your cooldowns, including your ultimate every time you get a kill. Um, also, when an enemy god is low HP. Hold on, let me just get this guy low HP. You can see that there's a little skull effect there. He is revealed to you everywhere on the map. So even if I come over here and I go behind a wall or something, I'll be able to see that Ymir is standing right there because he's low enough health for me to see him with my passive. So that's what your passive does. Uh, your scythe is going to do a base amount of damage plus 60% strength. All of um, Thanatos' abilities uh, deal strength damage. As you might notice, by the way, Thanatos does not have a mana bar. And that's because Thanatos' ability don't cost mana. They cost percentage of health. So you see the little six in the top right and the little four in the top right here. This cost, throwing your scythe costs 6% of my max health. Or, I'm sorry, 6% of my current health. Using my 2 costs 4% of my current health. Using my 3 costs 4% of my current health. And then, like, you know, you can, like, kill yourself just spamming a bit. Like. However, even though you can kind of own yourself by, by spamming abilities, if you hit your scythe, you are healed for 50% of the total damage done. 
So I, I did 315 and I healed for like 157, something like that, you know? So even though it cost a little bit of health to cast, I'm still gaining health overall. And then when I get a kill, I gain a bonus amount of health. So I'll heal 157 for my scythe, plus an additional 365 from killing him because 365 is 15% of his maximum health. Um, so the way that your scythe does damage, it's 60% of your, your strength plus uh, an additional bonus damage or like a, an additional base damage. Plus it does 10% of their max health as bonus damage. So like it does 315 to that. I, okay, it didn't tell me how much it did to that. It did 276 to this. It's going to do less to this because this thing has less health than Ymir does. So it's going to get less bonus damage uh, applied to that ability because it's not hitting a tank, you know? Your two is going to give you 24% movement speed and 20 flat pen. Um, and it'll make you slow immune. <clears throat> also, uh, something interesting is if you're running towards somebody that's slow or somebody that's low HP, you'll actually be an additional 24% faster with an additional 15% bonus damage applied to them. So if this guy gets low HP again, well, okay, first off, let's, let me take off face cam so you guys can see when I use my two, you'll notice my, my movement speed stat over here. Um, well, I accidentally left the fountain, so I kind of messed it up. So give me a second. I got to wait for the fountain buff to leave. Ba -ba -da -ba. Okay, so my normal movement speed is 442. When I use my two, it goes up to uh, 548. Okay. But if I get him low so that he has that effect on him, now when I use my two, okay, it still says 548, which is bugged. It should be way faster, to be honest with you. And it is way faster in like a conquest game. Like you feel the difference when you're actually playing a game. I think it might just be like a practice mode bug, but you do go faster running towards a low HP enemy. And you also deal 15% more damage to a low HP enemy when they have that effect on them. So just keep that in mind. It didn't work in this practice mode, but it does work in general. Uh, Thanatos 3 is going to be a silence. It's a big cone sweep with your scythe. And that sweep is going to deal 4% of your maximum health in order to use. But when it hits an enemy, it's going to do a base damage of 220 with 65% strength scaling. It's going to silence the enemy for almost one second. I think it's 0 0.65, 0 0.75 seconds. Um, so yeah, almost a full second, it's going to silence the enemy. When they're silenced, they won't be able to use any abilities. And that's pretty much all that does. Your ultimate is really, really good. So your ultimate does two different things. You can use your ultimate whenever you want. And you can land on an enemy. You can see the, how long my ultimate timer is by the little thing there. The timer runs out, I land. When I land on someone, I stun them. But, like, I do damage and I stun them. However, if they are low HP, if they, if they are 40% health or lower, and this does scale up every time you level up your ability. Every time you level up your ult. So let me get this Ymir to 40%. So when they're 40% health or lower, if you land on them with your ult, they are fully killed. They are executed no matter what. No matter how much damage, or like even if he has 1,000 HP, when he's 40% health, it is instantly killing him. The only way to survive this is to juke it or to Aegis it. There's no other way to survive it. And that's pretty much Thanatos. And Thanatos has... A you can build him a couple ways. I've personally been building him the proc way, just like everybody has. Um, with Titan's Bane or Serrated or something. Um, you could go Tech Okage as well. And basically, your Scythe is just going to do like a lot of damage with this build because you have a lot of procs on it. So your Scythe does 858. Right? Your 3 is going to do a ton of damage because you have proc items. Um... You're going to do a lot of damage with your auto attacks because you have hydras 
right? And Hydra's is going to give you good amount of damage. So you can see with some some auto attack resets in there, your combo is going to do a lot of damage. You're not actually trying to completely one shot someone. All you have to do is like get them low enough to execute and then you go up and down and you can actually click Thanatos alt so fast in smite 2 that you don't even leave the ground it's crazy like look how fast i can execute if you're just spam clicking you basically don't even need to leave and i can do it from like here too Because you can see the targeter of your execute, right? Like while your execute is charging up, ready to go into the sky, you can see that targeter show up. So like, even if I'm way over here, you can see the targeter show up. And so you know exactly where you're gonna land when you execute. So you can make the execute very, very quick. Yeah, that's pretty much Thanatos. Let's keep it moving. What's next? What do we got next? I don't even know who's next. I know we still got Zeus. Who else do we have? An ally has left Is that, that it, Zeus? We got Morgan, Ymir, and Than or and, and Zeus. All right. So Morgan. Morgan's gonna be a bit weird. Because Morgan is one of those gods that I don't recommend any beginner play no matter what. Because Morgan's ultimate, I'm just going to start off with her ultimate, is that she can transform into any character in the game. Um, any enemy character or any teammate character. When you transform into the enemy character or the teammate character, you also get their relic. So like, as you, you see here, I don't have a relic right now. Um, and that's because Ymir doesn't have a relic. But I can still use mine, obviously. But anyways, her auto attack is 100% scaling off strength, 20% scaling off intelligence. Her passive is every third basic attack, you deal um, a tick damage that does 9% of the target's max HP over three seconds. So you see one auto does 54, two autos does 54. The third auto will do 54, but then it will apply a tick damage that does 45 and then 45 and then 45. So every third auto, I'm going to apply that tick damage. And it's just going to stack up with each other and you're going to see a bunch of 45s popping up. So that's her passive. It's pretty good. Her one is only, by the way, all of her abilities only scale off uh, intelligence. When you transform, can you use the relic they have? Yes. I actually had it in a game uh, recently, yesterday, that somebody on my team transformed into an enemy person who had Smite in order to, or it's called Sunder, but they transformed into an enemy teammate who had Sunder, who then Sundered the Fire Giant so we could get it. So you, you can use their Relic if you transform into them. Um... Obviously, it doesn't take the cooldown away from them, but yeah, you can use it. But yeah, so the one is going to just do a some of these little, two little like clones of you on the side, and it's just going to do damage and stun. That's all it does. All it does is do damage and stun. Thunder like Hand of the God back in the day? Yes, it is. And then your two is going to do damage based off your intelligence. Um, however, your two has a special effect on it where if you use your two, you see that they get marked. The next time that they take damage from any ability in the game, um, like a teammate's ability, your ability, or like I think even your auto attack passive can proc it. Yeah, your auto attack passive can proc it. Um, but anytime they take damage from any ability or your auto attack passive, they will take a second tick of damage. So the first tick is 103. And the second tick is another version of, or uh, another tick of 103. 
So yeah. That basically does twice as much damage as it says it does. The three is very simple. You go stealth. You send out a clone in a direction. Um, That clone lasts until your stealth runs out or until it dies. Um, Your stealth lasts even if your clone dies, which is not the case in Smite 1. So in Smite 1, if your clone takes damage, you are revealed as the Morgan. But in Smite 2, when your clone takes damage, all it does is spam laugh the enemy and keep running in a circle. Or like, it keeps running in a straight line. And you stay stealth. So your stealth lasts for five full seconds. And you gain 40% movement speed while you're stealth. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much all of the Morgan. That's all you need to know about her. And you can build her crit chance, but I'd recommend building her probably just like this with Polly, because Polly is very, very strong. Um, Honestly, I wouldn't even mind to do more on this. But yeah, you can see the damage dealt is very, very strong. Like the burst combo, you can go like two and then stealth and then one and auto and two again. And just do so much damage there. Look at that burst damage. Crazy. Just straight up kill someone. Just one shot someone. Now you can also build her crit chance because your your uh, little passive, the, the the thing that does tick damage, that can crit apparently. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that can crit. Yeah, it can. Look. The little tick damage can crit. So crit Morgan is actually pretty strong. Although I would say probably just stick with her playing mage. It's much better to just stick with her playing mage for sure. An right. ally Next up, we got game. Zeus. Oh, not Zeus. We got Ymir. I forgot about Ymir because I've been looking at Ymir this whole time. I forgot he existed. Boop, boop. All right. So Ymir, he has 100% uh, strength scaling on the auto and 20% intelligence. His passive is that whenever you hit someone with your one, your two, your three, or your alt, they get frostbite applied to them, which means that they take more damage from your basics. It turns your basics from 100% strength scaling and 20% intelligence into 185% strength and 37% intelligence. So basically twice as much damage. So that does 58. Now it does 107. It's almost twice as much damage. Um, and that, that's his passive. That's his entire passive. Uh, oh, also if they hit you when they have a passive on them, like your passive, you can see if they have passive on them because there's this little bar under them. This little bar that slowly, go, slowly goes away right here. Um, that little bar, when they have that on them, they're going to do 10% less damage to you. So your first ability is your ice wall. It basically just blocks off an area. Uh, you can cast it, and you can, you can recast it. Oop. And you can just block off an area from, like, enemies or anything like that. In Smite 2, however, when you hit an enemy with it, you can knock them forward. Or, like, you can almost, like, knock them up if you land it right on them. You can manipulate their movement a bit. You can also knock them away from you. Um, also... The biggest thing about Ymir in Smite 2 is that you can knock yourself forward a lot. Like, you can really throw yourself. Like, I can basically jump, like, this entire star symbol. So you can really launch yourself with your wall. You just gotta place it at your feet and... and you get launched. 
So yeah, you can knock up enemies, you can knock up yourself, or you could just straight up block off areas. Very good ability. The second ability is called Glacial Strike. It does 70% uh, int scaling, 55% strength scaling, and it has a 25% slow on it. And all that does is he slams the ground. In Smite 1, you cannot move when you use this ability, but in Smite 2, you do, uh, you can move. You can move, like, walk forward, and you can, like, directionally change the ability where it casts. So it's very nice. This also applies Frostbite. Um, by the way, hitting an enemy with your shield applies your Frostbite also, as you can see. Your third ability is Frost Breath. It basically stuns the enemy and scales off of your intelligence. The stun is 1.6 seconds, which is a pretty long stun, all things considered. And you're rooted when you cast it, but it's not that big of a deal. It's a very big cone and a decent is a decently far range. Uh, this applies Frostbite, which is your passive that increases your attack damage. It applies your passive, and it also lets you... Um, on them and then last but not least you got the ultimate which is just a huge explosion it scales off of your intelligence and it scales off your protections so very nice um you can build ymir full tank and still do a lot of damage <laughs> excuse me but yeah, so when you use your ultimate, there's going to be a big circle that goes around you. Inside that circle, every enemy is going to be slowed by 40%. And you're going to charge up this ultimate. The more you charge it, the more damage you deal. It starts at 35% damage, scaling all the way up to 100% damage based on how long you channel it. And um, the base damage is 1350, plus your intelligence scaling of 160%, plus, plus your protection scaling of 30%. You can see it charging up there when it's fully charged it will pop and it will do damage um you don't have to wait for it to fully charge you can pop it whenever you want um like if you want you can just go doot, doot, and just blow it up immediately you can also blink while alting you can blink while channeling your alt so like i can alt over here and i can be like oh i'm here now and then blow up on it so there's two builds you can do with him there's the obvious full damage uh, mage build that makes you like completely one-shot people with Polynomicon and Hydras. You're just gonna like, boom, you know? Like a couple of, like a freeze breath poly, two poly, and you've done 2100 damage. There's this build, which is decent. It's not that great, to be honest with you. Um, And then there's the tank build, which, um, let me see. Well, the tank build you can do is like the very obvious one. Like if you're support, the one that I've been doing all uh, day today is like, um, fear robe, stone of binding and this. And even though you're full tank, you can still do a lot of damage because your passive is very, very strong. You know, you're still doing 100 damage per auto attack. And your ult is still going to do like 800 damage. 900 damage, never mind. And then, the way that most people build him... I'd say like 90% of the people who play your mirror, they're building him like this. They're going Book of Thoth, and then they're going into uh, this little crab item. Uh, honestly, they don't even go book, really. They just kind of go crab. But we'll keep book on. Ah, oh, no, we won't. Let's do this. Let's go this, this, this. And then they're going to go like Anita's Charm and like, I don't know, probably like Onk. So they don't have a bunch of damage. Stone of Binding, sorry. They don't have a bunch of damage, but they're extremely tanky and they still do a lot more damage. They have a lot more attack speed, as you can see. And instead of autoing for like 100, 
I'm autoing for 162. And instead of alting for 900, I'm alting for like almost a thousand, you know? Why crab? Crab is a very, very good item. 15 strength, 45 intelligence, 300 health. And all allies gain strength and intelligence when they're around you. Which you also get that buff. So it's actually more strength and intelligence than it says. So. And you still get the benefit of having the mushroom for support. Having anti-heal in your kit. Having all the attack speed from the like really good items. And then you can see because my face cams off how much protection you have too. So. Very nice. No, I'm not going to do that car. Not going to do that. And now we got the last God coming up. And then I'm going to tell you guys about the relics. And I think that's it. I think I've pretty much covered everything there is in Smite 2 at that point. So let's talk about Zeus. Zeus got a bit of a change. Zeus got a bit of a change. It's not the biggest change in the world, but it's something that makes him way more competitive, in my opinion. In fact, so much more competitive that I'd argue you might even see him in competitive play. All right. So obviously, auto attack, 100% strength, 20% intelligence. His passive is that whenever he auto attacks somebody, they gain a charge. And you can see under there, under the Ymir, he has three little uh, dots there. Those dots are how many charge stacks you have on them. So the first auto attack I'm going to do is 56 damage, and he has one charge. The second will do 67. He has two charges. The third will do 79. He has three charges. And the fourth will do 90 because he already has fully stacked charges. So every time that you auto attack someone, they're going to get a, a charge applied. And every time a charge is applied... Your auto attack damage on that enemy will be increased 20% for a total of a 60% damage increase. So 60% of 57 is, I don't know, somewhere around 30, right? And, you know, 30 plus 57 is somewhere around 90. So it's pretty good, dude. It's pretty good. And that's just your passive. Um, Your one is chain lightning. So basically all you do is you throw a lightning bounce that bounces six times and it slows enemies by 20% whenever it hits them. It scales only off your intelligence. I'm not going to do it on him because obviously it can't bounce. So I'll do it here. You can see it go bounce, 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 bounce. And it'll, it'll uh, bounce six times, slow by 20%. Your two is new. So in smite one, you throw your shield down and you can auto attack your shield for it to be AOE auto attacks and like pulse out and give you these, these charges on everyone. But in Smite 2, it is a clap in a circle around you. And uh, no, not yet one. There's no individual casting yet. But it's a clap in a circle around you and it gives you 35% attack speed, 30% movement speed, and the buff lasts for five seconds. And it does damage. So you clap does damage it applies one mark on the enemy and you get extra attack speed and movement speed during the duration of that buff so that is his new two or that's in smite two and in my opinion it is so much better than smite ones um his three is just detonate charge every charge that you put on an enemy gives you 30 percent more damage on the person so if you have one charge and you detonate it is 170 base power plus 30% damage. If you have two charges, it's 170 base power plus 60% of your intelligence. If you have three charges, it's 170 base plus 90% of your intelligence. If you have all three charges on the enemy, when you detonate, then it will stun them for 0.75 seconds. That is also new to Smite 2. In Smite 1, it does not stun. But in Smite 2, it does. Um... And it, that's literally the full ability. That's all it does. And you can detonate on as many people that have charges on them as possible. So like, if I auto attack you, and you, and you, and you, and I detonate, all four people get detonated. And then last but not least is his ultimate. It is the exact same as Smite 1, where he just gets a gigantic field of lightning. 
and it does damage to everybody in the area it strikes five times if they are fully stacked in the area like they they stay in the area it will strike five times over 4.5 seven uh 4.5 seconds and that scales 55 percent off your intelligence um there's only pretty much one way to play zeus and it is with the normal mid mid build right now which is similar to you could actually go gem of iso on zeus it wouldn't be bad at all but i prefer gem of focus and do more um sorry i didn't mean to do that um but yeah so your autos do a lot like 221 just because your autos scale off of your like their percentage increases so your first auto is going to do nothing like 133 and scales all the way up to 220 which is insane um all right your two does a bunch of damage increases your attack speed a bunch your cooldown is really low your detonate does a ton of damage and basically what you do how you play zeus is very like you peel off of yourself a lot like you're gonna you're gonna like one them to slow them down and then two them and then detonate while running away <clears throat> because realistically realistically it's so easy to get the stun off because if you two and then auto and one they're already stunnable like just by running away i've done 2000 damage to this guy which is insane and then the way that i play zeus is i will auto attack once i will two and then i one and then i'll drop alt and then stun them inside the alt because you're three your three when you have three charges is a stun so i'll get three charges on my enemy and then i will alt and then i will stun and i will hold them inside the alt with the stun that's pretty much the only way to play Zeus. There's, there's like, you, you shouldn't play like crit Zeus or strength Zeus or tank Zeus. Everything scales off only intelligence. So yeah, that's that. And then let's finally talk about relics because we have not talked about them at all. So relics in smite two are different than they are in smite one because there's no, you can't upgrade your relics. In Smite 1, you can upgrade your relics to do different things, and sometimes they even upgrade for free by themselves just by playing the game. But in Smite 1, you only get one relic, and you have to pick in the very beginning. You can buy other relics through the form of active items, such as something like the AoE Beads, or the AoE Sprint, like Stampede, or um, like a AoE Horrific, which is from Pharaoh's Curse. You know, you can buy all these active items... Um, and like meditation, which is the uh, Amanita charm, but, and th those things do count as like kind of relics from smite one. However, the only relic choices you actually get in smite two, you have to pick right when you start the game are beads, blink, Aegis, phantom, and sunder. But each one does something a little bit different beads. Instead of being CC immune for one second, you are CC immune for two seconds, which is very, it's a big change to be honest with you. But it has a very long cooldown of 210 seconds. Blink is not only blink, but it's actually combat blink. You can fire this while in the middle of combat. So like, even if I'm like sitting here fighting this guy, I can blink past him and detonate, you know? So blink is a... Um, I, I can't buy the others because I just showed off combat blink, but whatever. Um, yeah, blink is really good most people are buying blink right now or they're buying sunder um aegis is probably better in my opinion than beads because aegis makes you invulnerable for 1.5 seconds but it also gives you seven percent movement speed stacking up to three times and it's got a full 70 second faster cooldown than beads um it's got 140 second cooldown instead of a 210 this makes you CC immune for two seconds. This makes you invincible for 1.5 seconds with a 21% movement speed increase and a faster cooldown. So it's just, in my opinion, better. Um, the next one is Shell. Shell is basically the exact same thing as um, uh, 
it is in Smite 1, except it's always a Phantom Shell. Like, it's always max rank shell. It gives you the amount of HP plus, you know, 15 per level. And it gives you damage reduction plus 1% per level <clears throat> for only basic attacks. And it lets players go through player-made walls. The cooldown is really low. It's only 130 seconds, um, which is the second lowest cooldown for any relic in the game. And it's honestly really good. People don't really buy it much because of how good Blink, Aegis, and Sunder are, though. Sunder is the best relic in the game right now. It is going to be nerfed after this patch, but it's still probably going to be a must-buy for a lot of people. Um, and you are, when you activate it, you are going to instantly damage jungle mo monsters or bosses for a certain amount of damage, of true damage, plus you're going to do 1,000 damage when you get to level 10. So when your character is level 10, Sunder will always do 1,000 damage to any kind of jungle boss. So like when Fire Giant gets to 1,000 health, you Sunder him, he'll die. Gold Fury gets to 1,000 health, you Sunder him, they die. Any buff at 1,000 health, Sunder it, they die. On top of that, if you don't want to use your Sunder for a buff and you think you can get a kill with it, you can actually Sunder enemy gods. And it is AoE, by the way. You can Sunder multiple gods at the same time. Um, it will do 22 base damage plus 2 per level. Um, and it's true damage. So... Obviously, that's, you know, 22 damage plus 40. So it's 60, 62 damage uh, five times, which is over 300 damage over the course of four seconds. So it's really, really, it's actually a lot of damage. It's very good. Not only for securing jungle camps, because invading is like the meta in Smite 2 right now, so Sunder is like bought by, I'd say like three out of the five characters normally, but like the jungler, the support and the solo laner. But um, it's also just very good for like getting ganks off and killing people. And it's, it's really strong in general. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much everything you need to know about Smite 2, I think. Uh, if you have any questions about a like something very specific that I didn't answer or that you want answered, just comment it down below and I will get to it probably, you know, within the few first An few days that this game. video is uploaded. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video. I have talked for five hours straight. My throat is messed up, but uh, it's worth it to teach any kind of newcomer about Smite 2 or just people that coming from Smite 1 to Smite 2 who knew nothing about strength intelligence or the map or any of the new god changes or how to build any of the new gods. I have given you everything you need to be able to queue up the game, slam some uh, some casuals with friends, maybe hop into a ranked or two, uh, and just enjoy yourself on Smite 2. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you all. And um, make sure to like this video. Make sure to comment under this video. Make sure to share this video because I've ruined myself to make it. And uh, until next time, y'all, peace.